Judgment Day. The end of the world. It's today, three hours from now. Two hours and 53 minutes. What's up, grinders? Primetime grind. How you guys doing? Yo, shout out guys code the Floyd Grinders Sam Ash Mog. Jamaya, what's up? Buck Roger Dom P as they're coming in here. Hit that like button, guys. We got a show. CTR2 Quanvo, what's up? Woo! Yes, there was a lot of woos. Man, oh man, what a day, what a day. I've seen some shit to know. I've seen some shit. Yeah. We're going to talk about it today. As you can tell from the title, I got to fix it. This goddamn name, and I swear, the series as I got to fix this stupid... Mm -mm. I tell you, these names of this console has been driving me insane. The series leaks. <laughs> I got to change the title. But we'll get it. We'll change it on the back end. But you know what it's about. It's about the Series S. Yes, we'll change that title. Got to put that S for Series of Leaks. Well, I'll tell you, with that, as you guys get in here, the grind is build up. The grind house is open. Yeah, man, there's some... Yeah, I love space balls, man. And hopefully we don't make this a super long one because, you know, as I pre as I predicted, the my prices... I expected this to come in at two ninety nine, uh. So yeah, you know, I'm not gonna make this too long of a show, but we got some stuff to talk about. And with that, guys, we're going to start another episode. Oh, it grinds. My gears. Yes, what's up? So if you haven't caught, I did do some streaming with the uh, with uh, Avengers. I've been really digging that game. I've really been liking the Avengers game. So uh, I really want to get back to it. I just finished unlocking Thor. So I'm about like five hours, I guess, into it. Four or five hours into it. Story's great. Um, you know, we'll see about the grind. Speaking about the grind, you know, about it. But I really like for the story alone and for the combat, I'm really enjoying it. I think they've done a great job in, you know, feeling each character. But, you know, we'll see what the end game is. Uh, you know, the grind. And I haven't played co-op yet, but I'm enjoying the Avengers game. I think it's a really good game. Um, you know, if, if they were just throwing a whole bunch of missions together and you said, hey, just run around and do this and just some mindless stuff rather than having some narrative, some story, some good voice acting some good kind of character back and forth emotions a good overlapping story it's and you know introducing a new character i think they did a good job like the story alone and just the, the gameplay from what i'm playing is, is worth it so like you know i look at it as like the end game the grind and you know them adding more and more characters to it is just like that's just bonus stuff like uh so um now i am enjoying it so far i'll let you know my full impression i'll probably do you know a grind review just what i think about it what's up game night how you doing uh, when you know when I'm done with it, but uh, but yeah, about four or five hours in, I think about 40 40 50 percent done, 44 yeah, about 40 percent done, 35 percent done of the campaign. So, yeah, it's pretty lengthy, it's not bad, not bad. I'm liking it. You know, each character has the new thing, so I want to get back to that. But man, when I sat down last night and I was gonna grind some uh, Avengers, yo, what's up, Immortal Black? How you doing? And grind some Avengers. I see a tweet, a notification. Brad Sams, who's been talking about the Lockhart for two years, shows an image. And I'm like, what is this thing? And then it says, confirmed at 299. Like, really? He put his he put his at name on the image. I'm like, oh damn. Like, okay, so this must be real. 
at first I'm like, what the hell is that? I'm like, this is a joke. Like this is this is a mock up or something like that. You know, you don't have to do a double take. And uh yeah, so this is what it looks like, everybody. The I bring to you the Xbox Series S, otherwise known as otherwise known as the Lockhart. Hey, what's up, Glorious War? How you doing? And uh, you know, when I, when I first saw it, I was just like, okay. And here it is. One, two, and three. You're one ugly motherfucker. Damn, Arnold. Really? Woo! <laughs> Arnold had something to say about that. Damn. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, hmm. Yeah, so it looks like it's standing up. So, first off, let's just talk about the aesthetics, okay? So, first off, it looks like it's an Xbox Sad Edition standing up. Um, but they kind of highlighted the vents on top of it. And they made it a, a cylindrical, a cylindrical circle thing and made it a different color. Um, if you look at your Xbox, um, if you you look at your Xbox uh, S, you'll see that there are vents on the top of it, uh, and they're and they're um, you know those vents are on the top of it. It just happens to be this one they uh, accentuated it. Um, I I don't think it looks very nice. I think it looks kind of kind of weird. Um, I think what they should have done in this when I first saw it, I was like, oh, they should have made the whole thing one color. Um, either all black or, or, uh, you know, all white, uh, but the, having the grill a different color. And I, I kind of understand the reasoning for it because if they had it all white, since they are still selling the Xbox S, One S, um, people could get confused if the box all looks the same. And so they had to differentiate it. So they just did is change the color of the top. Uh, yes, it looks like a washing machine. Uh, it's a speaker that you yell into. Where are the first party games? Um, it is uh, um, an intercom right to fill Spencer's office. Hey, Charlie. Uh, it's the Angels. Um, yeah, and see, Brad Sands put his at thing right at this thing. And uh, and it's priced at $2.99. And uh, it has the white controller with it. And uh, yeah. The thing is, is that. I thought that they should have taken this. This is some of my ideas. Like they should have taken this. Um... Now let's see if I can find other render. I think I have another render of it here. Let me see. Is this? Yeah, this one's the next to it. Next to yeah, I'll show the Forbes one. So here I got the. Uh... So this is the other thing that that. Hold on. There we go. So this is the other image that they had here was that they had it compared to the X, which the X, as you know, it's, it's a it's a, it's a big box, right? Um, so the X is a big box, and this thing's like sixty percent small. It sits in there and has some vents up top, and it has the vents out the side. Now, if you look at your S, like if you look at the the um, the S, it has grills up here, but for some reason they they change this because they had to differentiate it, right? Uh, USB in the front looks like a sinking button here. Uh, no disk drive. And it has, uh, and and what I thought was is knowing how they had this with the green accents and stuff like that, they should have kind of done a little bit of that here to kind of make it part of one family, uh, because if you look at the two of them, they really don't look like they're part of a next series. You know what I mean? If you're talking about the Xbox One, the Xbox One S and the One X kind of look within the same family. That these are those 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 generations. What's up, Star Stardust? Where if you look at these two, you kind of don't think like, hey, this is the Scarlet family. Like this is a, a, another family of Xboxes. They don't like they don't share similar aesthetics. Like even if they made this a square, and to match the square up top here grill to kind of make them similar, um, they really don't have like a, a cohesive kind of display. It's like, hey, here are the series games. Especially if in moving forward, if they're going to be games just made for the series x's and s's the series series that's that's the whole confusing thing with these friggin names it's like you could talk about the xbox one family xbox one series 
or you talk about the series series or the series family. Like it, it's very the nomenclature is definitely tongue twisting to say the least. But the series family, I thought maybe have some cohesiveness between the two of them. Uh, because this just looks like somebody just put a hole in it. Um, and then people put like things in here. Like maybe if they put like designs in here moving forward, like custom consoles, maybe they could do something with it. I, I don't know. It, it, it definitely looks jarring and disorienting in the design. I'm not a fan of this the design at all. I think this is very simplistic. I think they went very um, function over form where Sony went a lot more aesthetically. Like Sony put a lot more consideration in what their console looked like. Um, Microsoft just kind of put them in a box and put uh, put vents on them. Um, Dom P, what's up? Yeah, so in this whole leak, like, so right after Sam Paul, um, you know, Brad Sam's leaked the Series S and the price, um, Windows Central with Jez Corden and Exact Bowen uh, did an article where they had, they confirmed this. They, they reiterated that they also confirmed that they're going to be the all-access program and that you could do this for $25 a month for two years and this with Game Pass Ultimate and this $35 for two years um, with, with Game Pass Ultimate. And they confirmed that this is $300 and the, uh, the Series X is $500. Um, but Microsoft didn't, com- didn't confirm the $499 yet. They just confirmed it. They confirmed the $299 uh, of the Series S. But for the X, they didn't say. But um, the same people that leaked this one said that the, the X is $500. But Microsoft, I don't think, posted it, that they said that the X is $499. However, what they did post from the leak is that they confirmed that the release of the S is November 10th, which is a Tuesday. Um, and they did confirm that. So... With that, the it leaked throughout the night, uh, and then they this morning like at five a.m. they basically confirmed it in a tweet, uh, and the, like this is the thing. So that was the aesthetics of it, right? The thing is, is that with all them holding on to this information, because if you recall. This X, and here comes, you know, this is my opinion of it. And again, this is my opinion. I'm not going to, like, I really don't want to shit on this this thing too much because, you know, I think that the 299 price point is definitely appealing. It is a replacement to the X. It is a better to the One X that they have discontinued, and this has better tech in it. And for 299 I think that, you know, it is a good entry point. However, the way it's been managed and the way it's been portrayed with this leak they they did the best they could, but again, I have to question what is going on with their marketing and messaging. I recall back when, before this whole next generation started, this whole conversation, it was like Microsoft has to be on point. They cannot falter. They cannot mess up. They got to have crystal clear messaging. And it just and with the the reveal of in December, of the X and the Hellblade too, like they had that, like it was going well for a couple of months early on, and then I don't know if it was the pandemic, but my goodness, once they started showing games or game trailers, and and then even delaying this, like this was supposed to be shown in June. This was supposed to be their June event was supposed to be this this Xbox, the Series S, um, the Lockhart. And they kept pushing it and pushing it. And they basically pushed it until it finally leaked. And from all the um you know from all the stuff today, yeah, I'm gonna go right through my, my Twitter feed with this. This wasn't a plan. Like this this wasn't a a, a calculated leak. This this was something uh, right here. So like, I I saw a lot of the employees from Xbox tweeting this. Uh, yeah, I know my Crawford. I knew this more hardware. That's why I was like, I really didn't know if I was gonna do a show or not. But I had to put my just my opinion out there. You know, for the grinders and the subscribers. Again, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. You get my honest opinion of how I 
how I feel things. And I look at things as a consumer. But also as a consumer, I want to spend money on products that are worth a damn. And, um, you know, uh, I looked at like some of their employees. Like Xbox, PC Gaming at Microsoft, Xbox Preview Program. You know, he goes, we tried so hard not to leak. Running global programs is hard and leak is frustrating. Yeah, great, you got the scoop, but so many uh, better try hard to keep it under wraps for so many reasons. Rant off, going to focus on family. So, um, you know, the leaks ruined the surprise. Like, this is it. Let's make it official. Like, they just confirmed the leak. Um, and unfortunately, you know, even Andrew Reiner was like, somehow someone found out about our secret console. What? How? No idea, sir. But they also have a date and a price. Impossible. We're never going to reveal that. What do we do? Make it official. Really? That's how we're doing it? How else? How else? Like, it's crazy. Like, everybody knew that this Lockhart exists. Like, you know, some people denied it. But the thing is, is that you hold on to this. And this is my tweet here, which, again, it just shows the frustration in that Bill Spencer does so many goddamn interviews saying dumb stuff. He's on Animal Crossing, talking about cloud. He's talking about next-gen games or, or do not move anything forward. Um, you know, it's uh, holding games back as a meme, then shows Halo Infinite, looks like crap. All this stuff running around like a goddamn movie star. But the, the biggest thing that probably could have benefited from a proper reveal, your next-gen console, leaks, and you just confirm it in a tweet. Like, I just didn't, like this. This this was it. And again, they still didn't even talk about it or sharing more soon. Like, it just... Like, that's not the way. Like, what's going on with this stuff? Yo, Salty. Yeah, it was not planned. It was not planned. People are like, oh, they did this to kind of probe at Sony. No, they're not that smart. No, because they basically just, uh, yeah. And, uh, where is it? This is the, the specs of it. But, yeah, so, like, it just is so weird how they just let this thing leak. After that, they had... And I said, I've been saying this all day. Can't imagine this is the way they wanted this thing announced. They had E3 of last year, XO19, Xbox 2020, Phil Spencer at the Game Awards. They had teardowns of the Series X from Digital Foundry, a spec breakdown. They had all these ways to show this. And they held it and held it. And held it. And then just to leak it on Labor Day. And then just confirm it. Like 5 a.m. the next morning coming off a holiday weekend. And then they showed like a trailer of it. Just like what's going on? Like I would think out of all the news that Microsoft has to discuss... Trying to, like, showing what they should have done was show. Look at the games running on this. Look at the features. Look how fast this game loads up. Look at this. Look at that. Look at that. And then get people hyped up and then just be like, and all for two ninety nine, Boom. That has impact. And now. Now. Now they just did it in a tweet, and now it's all out there, and they got people on every... This is the reason why I didn't want to do it. Uh, people yelling about, we're back to talking about tech specs again. God damn, I am done talking about tech specs. I, I'm just going to read these, and I'm fucking done. I'm done. I don't give a shit about ray-ass tracing. I don't give a shit about resolutions, velocity architecture, velocity RAM assholes and uh, elbows i don't care i am done talking about the goddamn hardware this stuff will make you a goddamn sexual tyrannosaurus
Some people use it as a dick yeah, measuring contest about their techs. <laughs> about their tech, tech, tech. I can't stand this shit. All right? It's about the games. The games are going to demonstrate what the tech can do. Okay? Connect had all this tech. It could sense your heartbeat. It could see you in 3D space. It could see me taking a dump through walls. Okay? But was it used? Did they use the heart rate? Like I'm watching a movie and then use my heart rate. It saw my face. It scanned me into a game. It could scan 3D objects. All this tech that was in Connect. What happened? It doesn't even have a fucking plug now on the back of, a, of this console. It's a goddamn paperweight. All the tech in that Connect. It, it, it moved. It had a motor in it where the camera moved. It followed you. That's why when you hear about the tech. Enough. Unless it's something that yields some sort of impact to your game. You know, I'm interested in the tech of like how the adaptive triggers impact the game. I don't give a shit about the RAM bus speeds. But you want to know what? If the controller is going to make me feel like something different, like it's going to impact what's happening in the on the screen, that's going to affect my experience, that's the kind of tech I want to hear about. Why don't you tell me if that share button does anything besides bring up the goddamn blade that says snapshot taken? Maybe that's something to do. But to hear all this shit, ray tracing, refresh rates, ray tracing... I'm going to tell you right now, from the grind to the grind house, ray tracing, get ready. Puck up your assholes. Here it comes. Here it comes. You ready what ray tracing is? Here it comes. Here it comes. Bullshit. That's what ray tracing is. God damn bullshit. Pause. Come on, don't bullshit me. Sorry, Arnold. I am going to bullshit you. Ray tracing is goddamn bullshit. Okay. Does this do software ray tracing? Does this do hardware tracing? You know what ray tracing does? It tanks. Your goddamn frame rates. That's what it does. I turn that shit off in Call of Duty Warzone. All right? Because when you're playing in a game, I could give a fuck that every leaf has a goddamn shadow and that the do shadows look a little bit better and all that other. I don't care. Not when my game performance tanks because of goddamn ray tracing turned on. All right. Now, if it's implemented properly, I think it's going to be a term that's thrown out there. Maybe there's a little ray tracing on a, on an object here and a little here, and they could say ray tracing, yay, 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 hip, hip, hop, hooray. But you know what? I'm, it tanks the performance, and I've seen it. I've used. I have a 2060. I've tried turning ray tracing on and off. You know what? The visual gain. Versus the performance that you lose. It's not worth it. Now. If a dev could utilize it in a way where. There's ray trace reflections and things like that. You know what? Hooray for them. But I'm just tired of talking about the tech. And maybe I'm just fed up with. Hearing about ray tracing and refresh rates and velocities. And smart deliveries. And, and even on Sony's side with their SLR. And I don't want to forget the shit that they're doing. Same thing with the, the, the NVIDIA graphics cards. All DLSs and this. You want to know what? That's wonderful. Show me how it plays in a game. Not in a tech demo. Let's go. But, nonetheless. Back to, to my rant on, on, on tech talk. Because I'm just like, I'm done. Like I'm, I can't believe we're still talking tech specs. And we're in goddamn August. So Fuck, we're in September. Holy shit. We're in September. And we're still talking tech specs. Goddamn. 
Sony dropped talked about RAM in February of 2013, and I think that was about it. Now we're talking tax packs still. I, I, I'm just, ugh. I can't handle it. All this bullshit. And whatever finagling Sony's doing to mimic 4K. I, you know what? I don't care. Just show me the games. All right? I, I was happy when they started talking about games because I was like, okay, now the tech goes away. We're done with the tech. That was in July. Okay? It's September. I know. Holy shit. It's September. And we're still talking about tech specs. But anyway, we knew this was coming. The Series S. Here we go. All right? And not to just say ray tracing is garbage, but you want to know what? I just think to talk about ray tracing and its impact is more hype than what it actually really does. And if it's implemented properly, hooray, hooray, hooray. And you want to know what? It is what it is. But I'm just tired of hearing about it as some sort of dick measuring contest about ray tracing. DirectX, I remember it was like, is it hardware? Is it software? Can it be done? Okay. Ray tracing wasn't even in the Halo thing. That's how important it was. It was a goddamn patch coming later. That's how important ray tracing is. I'm done with it. All right. So back to the bullshit here. So this is the thing that I thought was going to be a challenge for Microsoft. And this is on them. And, you know, given their messaging and how they've been doing it, they got a tall task to, to, to manage this. Because they really didn't do a good job between the S and the X on the one series they really didn't do a good job showing the differentiation digital foundry had to do a lot of that stuff and a lot of it was just brute force resolution um like increase of brute force resolution right well now we know that the xbox one x is discontinued they're not making that anymore i was like wow after three years that's done i thought that was going to be the transitional console well seeing this and seeing how they're marketing this this was the the only specs that we know here right Leave <laughs> Yes. Let's see how it's implemented on PC with ray tracing before we start hyping it up on console. Let's see. Because so far, we need to see better implementations of it. And not Minecraft, goddammit. Not Minecraft ray tracing. Because I think that's the only demo that where it was like, whoa, wow, look what ray tracing does. But anyway. So, they're marking this. First of all, if it's an old digital, right? Shout out to the 42 Grinders. How you doing? We're, we're uh... Quadruple A podcast. Hit that like button. Share it out. All digital. So there's no disc. This is another thing. 1440p up to 420 frames per second. This is is great. I think this is very ideal than just brute forcing 4K, right? Uh, this is how I currently have my other PC set up with my 2060 on uh, 1440p with 120 frames. And, uh, what's up, Marty Bison? How you doing? And, amazing. Playing games like in this, I think this is the, currently right now, but what we have, I think this is really, um, a good kind of spec to do. 1440p and 120 frames. I do think that that's awesome. But, this is a console we're speaking about, not a PC. Okay? Keep that in mind. Uh, direct actor, we're skipping that. Variable rate shading. Even though, wait, ray tracing implementation in here, that's good for the price. VR shading, uh-huh. Variable refresh rate, uh-huh. I think that stops screen tearing um, on screens that support it and variable refresh rates. Um, ultra low latency, that has to do with the SSD because there's a 512 SSD in this thing. And then this is the other kind of confusing thing here, where it's the 4K streaming media playback, which we know, and all of them do that, even the S right now, and 4K upscaling for games. Hmm. This stood out to me, and this, okay? Now, this uh, we'll, we'll just do a little, a little scenario, okay? Now, this is $299, right? Okay. So, first off, consoles. Consoles are associated with what? Grinders. Televisions. TVs. We went from 1080p TVs to 4K, and the next step is 8K. That's right, Mog. That's right. They, they're talking more goddamn hardware, but yes, Phil Spencer, how those games are coming. Humming, 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 hum. Yeah, exactly. He just finished his humming, humming, and now they're back to, to this. So... Consoles are associated with TVs. Here's the issue. 
There are no 1440p TVs native. Th that's not an, a resolution for, for television. They have those resolutions for PCs, and even PCs run still. You could buy PC screens for 1080p because of the high frame rates, 240 hertz with a 1080p display, or 1440p with 120, which I have a curved monitor. But you don't get that in a TV. A TV is not doing 1440p. Um, instead, the TV will use upscaling probably to get it to its resolution, and this with its 2.1 or 2.2 HDMI out will do that as well. Um... Here's the kind of the, the, the here's the thing. The Xbox One X, and I think I tweeted this out here. Uh, it was like one of my first tweets. And shout out to all the new followers I got too. Thank you very much. But I did um. So, what I what I tweeted out was uh. What was it? Yeah, that was last night. It was this morning, I think I did it. Yeah, this is what I tweeted. And this is what I wanted to just bring up. So I understand now why they stopped the Xbox One X. Because they got a market now a 1440p box with 120 frames. And if the Xbox One X was still on store shelves, the thing is, is that it would seem like a better console than the S. Because the X will be touting the world's most powerful 4K. Because remember, they put 4K all over that thing. Even though it was true 4K, which is native, up res, checkerboard, all that other hubbub. But there was native 4K on it. Saying this is a 1440p, this is a lower resolution box than the 4K Xbox One X. The S would look like it was part of an older generation. So they had to get rid of that narrative and kind of reset. So now they're saying this is the 1440p box and the Xbox Series X is your new 4K 60 frames per second box. That's kind of what they're doing right now. And then the Xbox One S, probably going to be 199 will be your kind of like, you know, fire TV. I'll be like, hey, that runs games at 1080p, upscaled stuff to 4K, you know, 900p basically console, and that one will be there. And this one will be your 1440p, 120 frames. Well, the issue that's going to be a challenge is that trying to say that, excuse me, when everybody's talking 4K, saying that a 1440p box is a new one. But this is the thing. Here's another kind of marketing tidbit. If this console is more powerful than the Xbox One X, and the Xbox One X was running games, some games at native 4K, it was running games at higher resolutions, you know, it wasn't running them at, um, you know, they were running at Quad HD. That's what this is. Um, and this is pretty damn close, 1440p. Um, it's half. So, the thing is, is that if the X at 6 teraflops or whatever power that had was capable of, of running close to 4K resolution in, in some games, why would they automatically just make this one, which is more powerful, have this general statement 4K upscaling for games? Um, that was like a somewhat question. I'm like, well, wait a second. If this is more powerful than the X, and the X was capable of running games close to native resolution in some instances, why would they automatically cap this off at 1440p and upscale for games? Like, this seems like a very general comment. So, my question is, and we're going to have to see this, is this console capped at 1440p resolution that's what i'm interested in seeing is this system kind of artificially capped at running a game at a 1440p resolution or will games run higher than 1440p on this system 
Because if they run at whatever resolution, the system is going to do 4K upscaling. This is nothing. This basically, is, no TV is at 1440p. So every TV is going to use, it's like plugging in a friggin' Nintendo Switch or plugging in an old ass console. It's going to upscale to 4K. Uh, with its, like, artificial software. Basically, that's what it's going to... Your TV does it. So, the console doesn't even have to do it. But, the thing is, is that, you know, technically, that Xbox One X was upscaling games for 4K. You know? Some games were native. And that was a whole big deal. Remember, the Pro had... The Pro Tato did, did bogus 4K, and, uh, and Xbox did native 4K, right? Well... They brute forced higher resolutions on the Xbox One X. But will we see higher resolutions on this system? Or will they cap it off at 1440p? Because the, you know, for them to just identify this target, like you should just say that, you know, capable of 1440p at 120 frames. Like, it's really interesting. That they, they kind of use these terms in their official marketing for upscaling for games. Like, you know, unless it's something they don't want to highlight that this system is capable of running 4K games. Because then that kind of challenges the Xbox One X, the Xbox Series X. And the fact that this is capable, like, my whole point is, is that if the Xbox One X was capable of running some games in 4K... This being more powerful, I assume, is even more capable at running games at 4K. Maybe not 4K 60, maybe 4K 30, maybe 1440p 60. I don't know, but I'm just saying power-wise, this system should be capable of running games higher than this resolution. So, will it? We'll find out when Digital Foundry gets their hands on it. You know? Because I always thought that was a challenge. Like, how are you going to say, like, is the Xbox... Like, how are you, you got to... How do you justify this supposedly $200 price difference between the X and the S? X does, like, 4K better than this does 4K? Because now you're getting at two machines right now that are pretty capable of doing 4K. They got the same CPUs. They got lower GPUs. Uh, they got the same SSD in it. Really, it's just a weaker GPU. It's like running like a like, you know a high end GPU versus a low end GPU in the same computer with the same system. And, you know, a little bit less RAM and stuff. So you got to think like it's the GPU and the RAM, but this system is pretty capable because the X was was pretty damn powerful. So it's going to be interesting because that two hundred dollar price difference is going to be something that they're going to have to show. This what this thing does, and this is the other issue that I always had with the existence of this Lockhart. This thing puts press even more pressure on their high end machine, and I don't know if that's on purpose. I don't know if that's what they want. They want this to fly off the of shelves and have their X kind of just out there, um, because what this does is that this does put pressure on them their high end. Because this at two ninety nine, and if it's capable of running games at higher resolutions and, and doing that, unless there's some artificial bottleneck that they're putting in here that's going to make games just cap off at something where they're basically unleashed on the X. That's just my speculation. We will find out when games start running on here. That's why I need to see more of this to know what the scenario is between the X and the S. Um, because, you know... This might be appealing to me. I might grab this for two ninety nine and throw this in in something, you know, uh, uh, under a TV or or in a in a rec room somewhere, and and you know just mess around, just have like you know a, a convenience of a console, even though I have a PC, you know, or even when this goes on sale for like two fifty or something like that, you know, maybe this is something to consider. But then they still have Xbox Live, where I get it for free on PC, but you got to pay for it on here, so like you still have that caveat. So, uh, I don't know. It's, you know, paying online for two ecosystems rather than just one. It's kind of annoying. But, you know, it's in a it's a great price. And the fact that they hit the 299 you know, I think it's great. And it looks like that the other one's 500 I never thought that. But that's the reason why they had to get rid of the X. 
they had to get rid of the X because the X would 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 look like a, a more capable console than this one because that one was marketed as the 4K monster, you know. And now this one is like, well, this is the 1440p box. It's like, well, wait a second, that's lower than 4K. Um, so I guess the X is a better sale than this one. And now it's like, no, it's not because this has an SSD. This has you know better better uh, hardware. This has better hardware, GPU, CPU in it. Uh, than the X, so, you know, and that, somebody has to explain that, but if you just look at it for face value, you're doing it, but again, the other challenge is, is trying to sell a 1440p box in a 4K world, you're in a, 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 you looking at 4K TVs, you're like, but my console runs at 1440p, you know, consumers are gonna be like, wait a second, Uh, like, who, what, like, I really, it's gonna be interesting to see, and that's why I said, this needed a, a reveal. This needed a proper explanation to where it was going to sit for next generation. Where it was going to sit in the family devices. Devices. Who is this for? The purpose. The content. How it runs. So people could really seriously measure the differences between the X and the S. Maybe that's forthcoming. Maybe that's coming up soon. Who knows? But the way this was revealed, I think, was not very effective in the fact that they really need to explain this. All right. And and they didn't. And that's unfortunate because they held on to this for a specific reason. If they just wanted to tweet this out. What's up, Noob of Games? How you doing? You know? So, we'll see. It's unfortunate that's the way it got announced. And, uh, you know, it's just, uh, it is what it is, but it needs basically some sort of explanation. And, uh, hey, what's up, Smooth? Hey, what's up, Glorious Kev? How you doing? Glorious! Shout out to over 52 watching. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe. Let's get the grindhouse growing. But, yeah. Anyway, it was... It wasn't the ideal way to, to release it because they held on to this news. Because I do think that this was sort of the, like, Sony was going to announce their stuff. And then Microsoft was going to just slip in and be like, oh, and here's our kind of 299 console. You know? You know, Kev, I'm same way. Like, I, I'm like, mm, like that's why I want to ex- hear more about this thing. Because 299, it's, it's not bad. Because you know what's interesting is that when the X dropped to 299, I was like, hmm, you know? Like, maybe, mm, you know, like, like, that's it. But then I was like, ah, I don't know. You know what? Let's see what this other one is. And now this thing at 299 you know, it is definitely something to consider as, like, a secondary console or something else. But, you know, um, the thing is, is that I wanted to see more of it. Because, you know what? I, since I got the monitor, this would be great for, like, this would be great. You know what? I would say one thing. The 1440p, you know, if this thing really, like, because it does have the variable refresh rates and stuff. So, this with a monitor, that's a pretty sweet setup if the, if this runs. And, and the, the mind thing, too, is that we really need to see how, like, what the game. I, I want to see. I'm really interested in see what Digital Foundry does running a game on this versus the X. To see that leap. I want, I, I'm really interested to see that. Yeah, like I said, Pug, I'm not a fan of the design. I think it looks horrible. I would like to put it upside down and put that speaker face down, but you probably can't do that. But um, actually, you know what I did see? I did see somebody take this and actually put the X on it, like the, uh, the white cross on it. That looked friggin' good. And that would have been a cool design too. Like if you just had this with a big X on it, like basically from here, somebody did that. Again, it's very plain Jane. It's very uninspired. Very just kind of like they had to differentiate it though. But you know what? I like I said, they had so many opportunities to really properly reveal this thing, and then unfortunately, it got leaked. You know, and I said smooth in the chat. You know, I saw smooth put out a tweet. He was saying like, he, you really would like to know what their initial plan was to roll this out. I agree. Like, I, I'm really, I would have been interested to see how they would do this. Because I think this thing needed 
this was their ace in the hole because they came out in December and talked about their ex. Like they knew it was the most powerful. It was like, boom, here you go. But this was kind of their their you know slip it in the back door thing. And you know, they leaked the shit out of it. And they had to confirm it. So again, their marketing, I don't know what the hell's going on over there. It's not like that they don't know what the hell they're doing. They're freaking it fills on every goddamn interview known to man. He's on Animal Crossing, all this other stuff, and they basically did it like this. Exactly, impatient. They dropped the ball with the with the review. But you know, two ninety nine, great price point. Um I do think that this is probably the one that they want to sell. Just like when the X came out, he said the S was going to be the the one to sell. So obviously this one is the one. And that maybe that's the whole point. Like, you know, me put put the X out there for the like, you know, as like the um the expensive one, you know, the 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 high end one like the ultimate edition thing where we only make a few but ever, but but that one will be out there. But you know, this is the one that's really going to be the one that drives next generation. Now, to that point, when you talk about what the PlayStation Five is offering, it really is now in Sony's court to dictate how next generation is going to go. If Sony comes out and says the PlayStation Five is 550 and 500 or 600 and 500 for the digital and the physical. Now, the value, and I think Mooch said this in a tweet. Shout out to Mooch. Now, this 299 console looks like a steal. But if Sony comes out and does like 500 and 400, okay. Now we're starting to see where it falls, similar to what we're in this generation. But then if Sony does 450 and 350, which I think that would be crazy. I don't think they'll do 350. Um, I think Sony's base is going to be 400. I, I think I think that uh, my prediction, uh, and I said this on, on one of my shows, was that I think the X comes out of 5. The S comes out at, at 3. I was right on those two. I think that Sony comes out at 450. And three ninety nine, and the reason why I said that was if you had five hundred and four fifty, a fifty dollar price difference. If you you're both leading retail costs as four ninety nine and four fifty four forty nine, I don't think has much as an impact as if you get that three in front of it. So you do four forty nine for the for the dig, for the physical, and you do three ninety nine for the digital. Now you got that three in front of it. Now. That's more appealing. I think if you go four forty nine and four forty five, I don't think or four forty nine, I don't think that has much impact. Um, or if they go four ninety nine and three ninety nine, but I think Sony wants to hit that four hundred dollar price point. So I was like, but if it really the difference is only the their drive, then I think it's a fifty dollar price difference, or maybe maybe they 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 don't. Like ship it with the stand or something like that. I don't know. And then it's like, okay, well, there's another fifty dollars. Who knows? Thirty dollars out of it. Let's make a hundred dollar price difference. So the stand comes with the disc because remember the disc is not as the disc one is a little oblong. Like it has like that little piece coming off of it where the digital one is like streamlined, sleek. So the other one might need the stand. I don't know, but I was thinking a fifty dollar price difference or a hundred, but. It depends. If Sony overdoes the Xbox One X or the, the Series X, now we're talking different. You know? Now, if, yeah, Garuda, right. If the PlayStation 5 comes in at 450 or 600 and 500, now this thing at 299 is going to be, it's going to scoop up the, the, the back end, you know? It really is. Uh, of people interested in that ecosystem. Now, does this pull people away from PlayStation? I don't think so. Does this get people on PlayStation maybe to consider an Xbox? Maybe. If they come out with some some compelling games that people want to play, maybe this is their entry point. Similar to, like, remember the Wii 60 where the Wii was a good accessory console? At that price point, maybe. For next gen, maybe. And they have that, which is good. It also makes the, that, that Switch... For two ninety nine, look, damn! Like if I get this for two ninety nine, what the hell? Nintendo's straight robbery. 
for two ninety nine for that goddamn Switch. And if they think they're going to do a Switch Pro and make that thing come out $300, eesh. When you get all this tech in the system for $299, I'm sorry. Like, you know, that the Nintendo, man, that Nintendo tax is high. But, yeah, I don't think that this changes the game. It, it will. It, it will have some impact if Sony out overprices its PlayStation 5. And I think Sony, it's really Sony's chance right now to either do what they did in 2013 or do what they did with the PlayStation 3 reveal. You know, it, it's a flip of a coin. Do they, they, do they want to, you know, make this thing look like irrelevant? They price their system, their digital one, at $349. $50 price difference gives you the PlayStation 5. Holy shit. Put some more pressure on this end. For a hundred dollars more, you get the PlayStation Five with all Spider Man and all its exclusive games and 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 all you know that that SSD and all the shit that it does. The and you know VR and all that other stuff, console VR and all that shit. for four hundred dollars. That puts some pressure on this. Because we've already seen this price scenario. We've seen uh, an S, a lower price S, a higher price X, and a PlayStation 4 Pro, and a PlayStation 4 slapped in the middle. Actually, we've seen, even with the sad edition, we've seen a significantly lower Xbox versus the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 4 Pro, and a $500 X sitting in there now yeah they came in halfway through the generation but it's been sitting there like for three years like that playstation 4 has been sitting right in the middle at the sweet spot at 300 and 400 and the xbox has been sitting at the tail ends at like 250 200 300 and 500 so we've kind of seen the scenario already and it's been like that for a few years after the x came out and um it really didn't do much and again, games drive the content. You know what I mean? And I do think that people are a little cautious to see how this really manage. How- What's the scalability? That's what I'm interested in. I want to see some goddamn games running on these things. We haven't seen anything really running on an Xbox. One X or a Series X or a Series S, nonetheless. It's been on PC. And at least we've seen some things captured on a PlayStation 5. But again, we haven't seen anything. I want to see things running on here. Like, I want to see some some shit going down. And, you know, that's the next step. Which I can't believe we're saying that's the step. And we're two months away from this shit. So I'm assuming Sony's going to come out soon. But, but Sony's going to have to... Um, Determine, like, you know, where, where they want to do. They're eager to sell consoles, so I assume they want to be competitive in price. But you never know. You never know. Also, another thing that came out, too, is that this is a 512 SSD. Uh, you know that the X and the S use proprietary memory cards. And, you know, shout out to Salty. He tweeted out something. We sound, He found some inventory thing. Um, I don't know where he got that from. But, um... Where was it? He tweeted out this thing, and I I don't know where he where he got this from, and his his insiders. But salty put this out that the Seagate one terabyte SSD expansion card, two nineteen ninety nine. Whoa. Don't do it! I'm warning you. Do not. Do it! Oof. Wow. That $300 X Series S gets gets expensive pretty fast if this is true. Just a one terabyte is about 220? I don't know. That 512 is before, I'm assuming. So you're probably getting 300 gigabytes. And then you got to buy proprietary memory cards. Remember, Sony, this was a huge thing. Sony allowing you to go get off-the-shelf M2 drives, ones that they deem compatible, but at least there's some market competition that you could shop around. If Seagate says these are 219 
These are two nineteen ninety nine. It's time to quit jammering before I start hammering. They, this is it. That's the thing, when because this is the only drive that works on your Xbox if you want to play next generation games. You have to buy this drive. Well, now that two ninety nine, you put on a few games on that thing. My near memory card. It's almost the price of the goddamn console. Somebody's talking too much. It's costing me money. So, I hope they're not true, but there's one advantage that Sony does have with its PlayStation 5 is that, yes, they might have an 800 gigabyte or something after the, the installation of something hard drive with their SSD, but you could buy an M2, M.2 drive off the shelf there's market competition there. Anybody could do it. So that is definitely a better way where there's an open market for compatibility to work on your PlayStation where you can pull up anyone off there that works and try it and you could go forums and all that other stuff. But proprietary hardware, I definitely, you know, it's salty. I remember the 360. It was a 5400 RPM Xbox Seagate drive in the 360 that was slapped in a special shell and it was $130. For like four, 500 gigabytes. And that was expensive at the time. It was, it was very expensive. So it was just because it was in a proprietary case. It, it was just an off-the-shelf drive that they threw in there. And uh, yeah, they just put it made it proprietary with the way it was had to hook up to this, the 360. You're right. The Vita was murdered because of the stupid SD. They didn't use SD cards. They used a Sony memory card bullshit. Still to this day. It's like 32 gigabyte card is like 80 bucks. It was ridiculous. The PlayStation 5 doesn't have a removable hard drive, but the PlayStation 5 has a dock where you could put an M.2 drive from anywhere in there. So an open market M.2 laptop, uh, you know, M.2 drive. I put them in my, my laptop. Um, and you'll probably get them for like, you know, I got a two terabyte for um a two terabyte for like two hundred dollars for my laptop. Now they're gonna be ones that are compatible, but they're gonna run compatibility. But I'm sure forums will say, hey, this works, go in on sale. It's a two hundred dollars for a two terabyte drive, and you throw it in there. Microsoft has this proprietary drive. Now, if this is true, that's an added cost. And that's goddamn expensive. For one terabyte, two hundred and nineteen. And they go into their back slots. So Shout out to Salty. I don't know where he got that from, but man, oh man, that does add the cost to that delicious $300 price point that everybody's been hyping up. That is not, uh, that is something to think about and consider um, if that is true. And uh, also the availability of those things. Because again, it's the only way to play next generation games on the Xbox uh, Series family. Uh, if you want to play your old games, you can run them off your external hard drives. But if you want to take a, a advantage of all the features of the new, um, the new speeds and the new the new uh, hardware, and also even to run a game that's only built for next generation consoles, which <clears throat> not Microsoft games because they're not making a next gen only game from their own studios. But you need to run it off that drive. You can't run it off your old external drive. So I don't know if like instant resume and all that stuff works with external games. Maybe all those instant resumes and the five of them that you could have open at the same time only works for games on the hard drive or on that Seagate drive. Now the value proposition is looking a little a, a little uh, a little scary here because now it's like, whoa, what games are on my main hard drive to take advantage of these new fast features? Uh, you know. And Sony's going to have to explain their situation too. But at least with Sony, you have an option to buy one off the shelf. Uh, which is, is which is nice. Whereas the Xbox went back to the memory cards. Uh, because, you know, I'm surprised they couldn't put lightning ports or anything like that in there. Instead, they did this proprietary slot that you throw the Seagate in there. So, you know, it, it is what it is. But it's definitely going to add to the cost if, if you're going to put games. Especially on... The X, the S, which is an all-digital console, 
they can't offload things to uh to a disc or run off the disc or anything like that. It's all has to be on there. So you know, what's this? What is I'm just looking to see if any news leaked, man. The way shit's been leaking. What's this? Uh oh. people are saying something about tomorrow. PlayStation 5 maybe tomorrow. I don't know. See, I thought that Sony was going to announce something because associated with uh with the um you know, with the t- the uh Call of Duty multiplayer reveal. But um we'll see. We'll see. Again, we'll see what Sony does. If Sony priced that thing uh, really high, we will see. But uh you know, I I know I think Sony's gonna hit that four hundred and five hundred. Uh, that that's my thing. Or four I would think four fifty and four hundred. But if they go over five hundred with their with their console, then we're gonna then there's gonna be something to talk about. Because then it's gonna be like, okay, well now we gotta we gotta see. Because now you do have a lower teraflop machine and again and you know more expensive than the X. But you know, if they're gonna be overconfident and do that stuff, you know, let's see what what it's worth. You know, they got the games and stuff. Like, I don't know. But, you know, the, I go with the, the games on. And Xbox is not really releasing. They don't have a lineup. And and the, the one thing that I did say was that for Microsoft really to gain momentum, they had to really undercut Sony. Like, they had to release the PlayStation. They had to release the Series X at $400. You know, or, or or the the this this one at two hundred. Remember, remember the rumors. Oh my God! Remember the rumors when um, wait, where is it? I I tweeted this out this morning. Where was that thing? Uh, damn, where is it? Ah, but just a few months ago, uh, seems so long ago, right? But just a few months ago, we had uh, people were saying. That uh, the S was going to be um, $200. And, uh, yeah, I was like, huh? There we go. Remember because this rumor that broke where um, that Lockhart was going to be half the price of the Series X? So people were like, oh, well, the Series X is going to be 400 so Lockhart's going to be 2 and then people were all running around with that, going like, "Yes, I heard it's half the price of the X, and, and Microsoft prepared for a four hundred dollar Xbox Series X." I think this is also the dope that said about mic drops. So you could tell this guy to take a hike, Eastman. Take a friggin' hike, leak my ass. But yeah, but again, they didn't come out and confirm that. I don't think they're doing a six hundred dollars, but. Maybe we go a two four hundred, but everybody remember this this article. A whole bunch of people basically went crazy, going the Lockhart's gonna be two hundred dollars, two hundred and four hundred. Yeah, I'm like, how the hell? I remember talking about this. Like, the, how the hell is they gonna have next gen consoles that cost more money than the current gen consoles that've been on store shelves for five years and haven't had a goddamn price drop? <laughs> oh man, oh, the internet. But yeah, this was referring to the mooch where he said about you know everybody knew this thing, and but you know even speculate the price, but everybody talked about this, the four teraflops, everything. So they finally just confirmed it, just like the fable news, you know. But um, you know, so it's just that the fact that it's real, I'm not impressed with the with the shape of it and the, like what it looks like. Um, but you know what, two ninety nine, good on them. Now. The Bulls and Sony's caught to see what they're going to price this and what next gen is going to look like. Um, and we'll see, you know, if, if Sony does do that, uh, that price. The other thing that um, I'm still sticking by it. I think Sony's going to do 450 and 490 and 399. That that's what I, I think my Sony's going to do. I think they're going to undercut the X and make their system a hundred dollars more than this one. Because the thing about it is that Sony's really not in competition with the. With the S, like the S really is a, a basically a refreshed X with newer specs, with the updated graphics cards. It's like it, it updated stuff. So 
it's really kind of the transition console per se. If like they did a refresh, you know, they do this all the time. Remember the E, um, the Xbox 360 E, and uh, and, and you know the the PlayStation. They always do like the slim, super slim, and they basically do like a last iteration of the generation Xbox to get it like as a or the last generation PlayStation to kind of slim streamline it as like the last ditch effort to cut costs and stuff, but. They basically just got rid of the X as a transition console and basically revised it with updated hardware to do this. Now, my whole thing with this whole reveal is that. And shout out to the over 56 watching. Hit that like button. Share this out. But this is the thing. <laughs> People are dumb and patient. People are dumb as hell on the internet. My thing is this. As with any kind of reveal of technology, you typically show your your headliner, your must-have product with all the bells and whistles, your flagship, the Series X. And you market the hell out of that thing, making it look like this is the only and best version of next generation and this is what it is just like with the note 10 and all this other stuff and the and the the galaxy s 12s and 20s and 30s they always show the flagship with all the stuff that it can do six cam, like you know four cameras front and back and this and the sell for two thousand dollars people line up and buy oh my god i want all the features then a few months later when the after that though is down, then they show the Samsung 20A. It doesn't have four cameras, it has two cameras. It doesn't have a 4K OLED screen, it has a 2K LCD screen. It's not waterproof like our flagship, but it, it is submerged like it could get splashed on. And that was two thousand dollars our flagship. Now this one. Half the price at $1,000. The Samsung 20A. Then they hit the next market. But you really never see a phone manufacturer showing, like, uh, if they want to follow this phone thing, you don't show, you don't show the, the cheap version and the expensive version and launch it on the same day. Same thing goes for even the graphics cards that just were announced. They show the high-end graphics card and the low-end graphics card. But they're not all coming out on the same day. They're like, oh, September's the... They they, they start with the high ones. September's the, the, the 3780 and then the 3070. Yeah, that comes out October. Oh, well, okay. Like, they tear it off. Make you wait a little longer for the deal. I think they both confirm these things coming out the same day. They're going to have two products, a high-end and a low-end, coming out on the 10th. Unless they stagger it and they make the X come out sooner. That would be interesting. Because, again, I, I, it's confusing as to what was really specified and what wasn't. All I've seen from Microsoft was confirmation of the S. I didn't see them really talk about the X, nor the X price or launch date specifically of the X. They said the S with a November 10th launch date. Now... They could shake the whole world and say, hey, Series X is coming out for $4.99, and that's coming out the week before. That would be interesting if they say the X comes out a week before this one. That's that, 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 I think a staggered launch like that is not too bad either. But that both of these come out on the same day, like it, it really does kind of undercut your own product. And it really makes somebody walking in a store really have to consider the two of them. That's exactly what I'm saying, the Q1985. If both launch at the same time, the S might overtake the X with that price. Exactly. You, you, you're cutting your nose off to spite your face. Like you're basically, you're, you're basically taking away from somebody who would have walked in the store and probably bought. Now, again, I think all of them are going to sell out at launch. 
But I'm talking about maybe after the launch, I guess. I don't know. Maybe, like, if you just see both of them coming out at launch, like, I do think that they might sell out just because of inventory issues. But I think if they're all, like, maxed out of inventory, the S will probably sell more and take away a potential customer that would have been an X customer. You know what I mean? Because there is a decision now you have to make. You say, if you're staring at launch day and you're looking at two consoles, like an S and X, which one do I get? S and X. They're like, but wait, is it worth 200 Is it worth 200 Should I get, you know, a bunch of games? Should I get a year, of ga- two years of Game Pass and, and the S instead of getting just the X and no Game Pass? Like, the thing is, is that you are, you're offering an option, but you're also offering, a, you know, you're kind of, you know, challenging yourself. Not only do you have to compare that versus a PlayStation that's Spider-Man and games, but you're also kind of, um, you're, you're, you're diluting your, your own install base because you're basically segregate, you're basically separating it at launch rather than having a, a holistic, most powerful console X launch and focusing on that. And getting up the other people a couple, a month or so later with the S, the ones that couldn't get it, you're basically putting both of them out there at the same time, and you're really kind of you're kind of separating your audience right there at the front. Make a decision: do you want the weakest or do you want the strongest? Do you want a disc or no disc? And that's the other issue. The fact that this doesn't have a disc really challenges your upgrade path because if you didn't buy the sad. And you've been buying the X, the S, and all that other stuff. You've been getting discs, right? So if you want to upgrade and trade in your previous console, the only option you have is the $500 X because it's the only one with a disc drive. So now the decision disc or discless is now a $200 price difference and consideration. I don't want all that power. I just want to play the games on disc. Well, then probably you got to keep your old console. You know? So that's the... Especially with the whole backwards compatibility. I know a lot of people, myself included, went out and bought physical discs for backwards compatibility because they were cheaper than the digital version. The digital version was like $30, but GameStop was selling it for $9.99. And you had to buy it at GameStop before GameStop jacked up their prices. So having that physical backwards compatibility, it's negligible if uh, if I if you upgrade to an S. And that's where I think the decision for discless and disc is a tough one. Because if you have a whole bunch of Xbox discs, there's only one upgrade path for you right now, and that is the X. So you're looking at $500. You got to do it if you want to play those disc games or keep your old console. But not reap the benefits of next generation power. Where Sony, you don't have to compromise power for your decision of whether to go digital or not digital. They stated when they announced the, 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 the that console, the PlayStation 5, the PlayStation 5 is... The same system. It's just one has a disc and one doesn't. So your upgrade path to PlayStation is a simple decision whether you want a disc or not. Jamal, yeah, I know. They haven't shown Spider-Man gameplay. Even Horizon 2 gameplay. Wait, we didn't even see that. All they've shown is Ratchet, and Ratchet's been shaking, shaking people of how incredible that looks. They didn't even show half their shit already. Spider-Man Watch. That, that image... Of Spider-Man. If they show that image of Spider-Man compared to that PlayStation 4 image, yo, I can't wait to see what Spider-Man looks like. But Sony still has some stuff to show. But the back to the disc and discless. Like the thing is, is that with Sony, you're not compromising power for your decision whether you want to go digital or not digital. That's your decision. Where with the Xbox, now with the setup that they have right now, you are looking between a $500, you know, most powerful console to play discs. And one was says, hey, well, I'm not going to use my discs. I'm just going to buy them digital and go with a, a weaker console. Well, now your decision to go disc or discless is now compromising power. 
And now that that's it's that that's that don't sound like for a company that that touts options. That sounds like kind of a forced option. Like you would think they would have a discless X as well, or at least an S that has a disc and a discless. You know, make this at three three hundred and maybe three fifty one with a disc. Like have that option. Yes, that's more hardware, but you know you are you are tiering the system. You are associating the disc with 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 the power, and meanwhile, this system doesn't have one. So if you have a bunch of discs, there's only one upgrade path for you, or you're staying where you are. And that's a Phil Ness right there. And that's it. I don't want to hear nothing else. So until they release a discless uh, X, and it's not even necessary like having a discless X, but having a disc enabled S. Because you got to think about it. Somebody who's interested maybe on the lower end of, of, of a, not all the power and kind of like a casual that just wants to play Call of Duty and stuff on it, they probably want to either trade games in, you know, hand off games, borrow games from friends, do the things that you would do with typically a physical disc. Maybe buy used games because they're price conscious. They don't. They're not. They're not the elitist that want to buy everything top dollar, seventy dollar games, hundred dollar versions, top graphics graphics system. Maybe they're more price conscious. I just want a two ninety nine console that plays my Call of Duty. And what I do is I play my Call of Duty. I trade it in and I get another Call of Duty, and that's it. And I trade that one in and I get my Call of Duty, and I trade in my NBA. All those people that line up to play NBA at GameStop and to pick up their game. Your 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 entry console doesn't have a disk drive in it. You know, those who may be interested in purchasing a price conscious two ninety nine console might want to have that flexibility of using a disk. Trading in a game. I, I only I buy I, I, I don't buy digital because I trade in my game because I buy the next year's version with it. Well, that that kind of thing. Well, then stay where you are because you, you're not interested in that one. So, that's why I said having the disc option with the low end one should have been there, and by them locking away and making just an all digital low end one to keep the price at two ninety nine, that's fine. But the disc, as we saw with the sad, it's only a fifty dollar price difference. Like the the X the S was three hundred and the. Uh, and the X, the S was three hundred, and the SAD was was fifty dollars cheaper. And Major Nelson said, like the fifty dollars price difference. So why don't do that again? I know it's more hardware, but you, but you should have that option, right? Phil, options. Never give up. Never surrender. But it is what it is. Those are just some scenarios. Like I said, two ninety nine is interesting. It gives you a hmm. I want to see more. I think it's unfortunate the way it was announced, um, the way it was leaked. I think that that you know they held on to this news so long, and they were they were shook that they had to announce this thing, announce it the way it is, and uh, you know, again they're running around crazy. Is Booster coming in hot? I still got to ask that question. Is Booster coming in hot? Nobody likes you, Booster. I don't know, man. I don't know. And Patience says at least Sony has Spider-Man to entice casuals and hardcore alike. Yeah, Spider-Man is a pretty big deal. Now, if Halo was here... I'm not going to say Halo was going to flip the script, but Halo would have been a good kind of thing. The other thing that I it would have been a good kind of leverage here. Booster's coming in hot. He's coming. Who's oh, coming in hot? We got plenty of Turbo Man's faithful Saber Tooth Tiger Booster. <laughs> <laughs> Booster's coming in hot. But. To the other point that I wanted to make out is that if Xbox had next generation exclusive games, I would see more of a a point of having a Series S and an X. 
But because their games are transgenerational games from like the X, the S, this and that, by having a second family of devices, the the series family, for first party Microsoft, it really doesn't make sense if you're still going to support your older consoles for the next two years. Now, maybe eventually it will make sense when they stop making the Xbox One and they just get rid of the One family at all. But you're not launching with any games specifically from your first party that are on the series family of consoles. Justifying, wow, for $299, I could play the brand new Halo game that's exclusive to next generation. Well, first off, the Halo game's not coming out. Secondly, it was never exclusive to next generation. But if it was, I think this console would have had more impact. If Microsoft had like a next generation game from them, like a Fable, a Perfect Dark, Halo, Gears expansion, something that was exclusive to next generation, like what Sony has with Ratchet and Spider Man and Hel- and uh, Horizon Two. Now, I think a two ninety nine just to get into that ecosystem to play those new games from them holds more impact. But this is where Phil Ness strikes again, and this whole. Everybody's this forward and backwards compatibility. We're all friends. The thing is, is now this 299 console could have been something bigger than what it is. If you had some big games tied to only next generation. But he says that that's not true. And don't forget, you're my number one customer. That's his PC dudes, you know, Phil's number one customer is PC dudes, give them all the games. Jesus, you think they'll announce goddamn uh, release dates to friggin' Flight Simulator and Gears Tactics and Age of Empires and all those other PC exclusive games that haven't even seen the light of day on Xbox? Give those Xbox console owners, the, you keep asking more money from them, dudes. 500, 300, eh. Phil, what about the games, Phil? Humna, 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 hum. Phil, how's Halo look? Humna, 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 hum. Uh, uh, Phil, do we have, what's the medium look like? Humna, 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 hum. Uh, Phil, uh, what about, um, you know, have we, do we have gameplay with Scorn is? I really want to see more than just a video. Humna, 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 hum. Okay, Phil, thanks. <laughs> Everybody's a pilot. <laughs> but, like, when it comes down to the software... They've been falling flat on their face. With gameplay. With the games. But they're still trying to sell you services and hardware. And I hoped that we wouldn't be talking. And that's probably another reason why I was just like, do I hit the record? Do I do this? Because I'm just like, god damn. They're going to talk about more after those two shit-ass software reveals. The delay of Halo... The, the the horrible no gameplay and these games are not ready. You're going to go right back to talking about specs and more god damn hardware. Oh, I was hoping that they would tie this S because we knew it was existing. If they tied it into some more game announcements and some gameplay. That's what I hoped. Maybe that's tomorrow. Maybe that's some people hyping up. Who knows? But now the cat's out of the bag. And we're back to talking about more hardware. But we will see. We will see what that is. And you know, it, it just it's just it's just I'm done. Done talking hardware. I just wanted to end. You know? You one ugly motherfucker. That looks so much better. See what I mean? This is what we thought the S was going to look like. 
and now let's see it's part of the family. It looks like it's part of a family. So I look at that, and I'm like, okay, that could run the series family games. Okay, so next-gen exclusive games, when they do make them, because Phil doesn't like them, but they're going to make them because devs don't want to make old hardware because it holds back game design. That's not a meme. It's the truth. Optimus Code will tell you that. The goddamn developer, he knows. Holds back game design, but but the thing is, is that by looking at this, you know where it is, where it belongs, where it exists in the generation. You look at this and go, You're one ugly motherfucker. You're like, who? Where? Is this a DJ booth? This is the chopper! Like, what is this? Do I talk into it? So, excuse me, uh, where are the games? First party, please. I like to two, take two first party games, please. Um, release rather soon. You can't deliver that? No, they're not ready? How long? Two years. What? Do you yell on this thing? Is that what you do? You yell on this? That, that, that was better. That would have been slick. But, you know. It's for Ness for you. Come back next year. That's right, Buck. <laughs> Come back next year. That's what they say. And then it's like, what is this? The rectangle. What? It's a PC. Wait. Yeah. Xbox what? Series X. Wait, that's not a name. Eh. <laughs> Come on, man. Their marketing's been all over the goddamn place, man. I swear. It's been just bullshit after bullshit after the since they had that game revealed, man, it has just been bullshit after bullshit. Yes, hit that like button. Thank you. Yes, hit that like button. Shout out to all the grinders in here. But yeah. You know. And then the last thing, as we take this home, uh, is that, yes, and hit that subscribe button too. Yeah, definitely. Like, just build this grind house out. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification. Because, again, you never, I, tr I do one once a week. I do some streaming. Maybe sometimes two times a week. Like, if there's some more news tomorrow, I'll try to get one out there tomorrow. Like, you know, it, as the news hits, I want to get my reaction. If I have a feeling about it, I'm going to hit that record button. So hit that notification button. Hit that subscribe button so you know when I'm going live. Because I kind of don't want to do... This show, every Wednesday, I'm going to be grinded. I, I, that's not real. That's not who I am. If I want to talk about something, I'm like, shit, I got to say something. This is grinding my gears. Then I come on here, I do my thumbnail, and I hit go. And that's why the Grindhouse, you subscribe to the Grindhouse, hit that notification button, hit that like button, so you can check it out live, and you know when I go my shows. So there's, there's a little uh, a tip for you. But I try to do them on a Monday. Usually I'm grinding on a Monday. I wanna, I'm like t picked off, pissed off, the weekend's over. And then some bullshit news drops. Phil Ness says something. I'm going to guarantee something. Phil has an interview. There's going to be a grind my gears after that. Because that guy says some dumb ass shit. And Phil Ness has to go. Like I said, not that I don't like the products. I don't like what Phil's taking the products. He's a nice guy. But he has devalued, de-emphasized. God damn it. One other point I did want to make. My girlfriend. <laughs> you know, one thing, other point I want to make too is like, you know, it's very interesting. Before I get to the last topic, it's very interesting that Microsoft put a lot of emphasis on certain products. I mentioned Connect. I mentioned Mixer. They went all in on these products. They stay, man, if you go back to Phil Spencer 2013, circa 2014, he was hyping up Connect and hardcore games for Connect. Mixer, they threw money at it with Ninja and Shroud buying top talent from Twitch. They went all in on Snap and Connect and Cortana. Cortana speakers with Harmon Card. They went all in on this stuff. 
And what does it all have in common? Judgment Day. The end of the world. It's today, three hours from now. Two hours and 53 minutes. They all saw Judgment Day. Phil Spencer walked into the office. Put that cookie down! Now! Axeman, done. They were all gone. And Microsoft made it like it was here to stay on all those things. Connect was here to stay. Mixer's going to be the next thing. I mean, you could control games through Mixer, chat. and. But know what's really interesting and really off-putting? Is the de-emphasis on the Xbox console. Where Phil comes out and just says, It's not about how many consoles we sell. Stay where you are. If you want to upgrade, upgrade. We're going to support you. Bring your stuff with you. Stay where you are. It's not about the console. It's about the gamer. If it's about the gamer, then where the hell are the games? VR's... Like, all this... Well, I'm not even talking about VR, but, like, the thing is, is that... All those products that they really supported and, and, and emphasized as being the thing all died. But what the hell is the Xbox if they're already dismissing it as it's not the key contributor to their vision? It's there. It's there to meet people on TVs and, and do whatever they want. But Phil always manages to de-emphasize it. Putting games just on PC. You don't think there's an audience on console for your own first-party games? They need to be a PC first? It just is eerie. The fact is, is that even products that they were fully behind and supported died. What the hell does the console look like when they're really dismissing it? Is it an opposite effect? Or is it going to see the death of Mixer, like how, how everything else? Is this just a pacifying moment? Because another thing that kind of struck me, as I stated before, about the X and the S and their releases, is that it seems like Microsoft is stacking the deck. It seems like they w if this was maybe a normal generation, they would have led with the X, most powerful console, maybe came out with a slimmer version with the S, or maybe a more powerful version of the S or, or, or this and do it. Instead, they're taking their their probably their 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 next four years of consoles and just saying, launch it this holiday. Take the S, the X, the M, the two, the Z, the A, the B, the F. Ship it all today. But Phil, the S was supposed to be our re our reiteration of no, ship it all. Like it just seems to stack in the deck. It's like, I want to sell my next-gen console and the revision of the next-gen console. Let's go. I don't know. It just seems kind of weird. Like, it seems kind of rushed. Like I said, it doesn't seem very strategic. Having it, like I, as we stated uh, multiple times before, where that, you know, it's kind of tapping, it's kind of eating into the X. Like, it puts more pressure on the X to show its differentiation, to show why it's more money. Because of the fact that this exists. If this didn't exist, Microsoft would have had a little bit easier way. They could have focused on the PlayStation and focused on why we're better than PlayStation rather than competing with themselves not only do i have to show you why i'm better than the playstation but i also got to show you why i'm better than my 299 product that's chipping away at, at at the main one and the other point is is that everybody's like oh the 299 one's gonna fly off the shelves the s is gonna sell like crazy i understand that the s is more powerful than the x but god damn i don't want the s to be Microsoft's main console for development. Especially if I want to play on PC and I want to play, I want to see, I'm buying, if, if you're a customer buying a, a $500 X, the last thing you want to see is the S, the budget console, being the most popular one. Because guess what's going to happen? 
Developers are going to focus on that one. And your pretty 12 teraflop machine is going to get a kind of a a jack. Uh, Jack up the resolution, ship it on the X. Rather than the X being tested for its full potential. Same thing happened with the X and the S. That's why the X really just jacked up resolution. It really was never fully optimized for the full 6 teraflops. Because nobody was using it as a primary development kit. Now, it could be because it came later in the generation. But if you look at this, if the S is the thing that's flying off the shelves and it's the most successful console and the X is really finding it a challenge to move things, developers are going to be like, oh, you know what, let's focus on like this one that's more powerful than the X. And Meanwhile, if I'm developing on a Sony platform, I'm maximizing those 10 teraflops because that's the only iteration if i'm making a playstation 5 game if i'm making a series a series uh family game an x and s game now the s is the most popular one i'm gonna make sure my game is optimized on the s because that's the most consoles that are out there and then also i'm gonna jack i'm gonna put it on the x jack up the resolution and ship it and maybe you know it doesn't run as nice you know, we've seen this so many times on just between the Pro and the X. The X was plenty capable of running a game, but the Pro ran the game usually better at lower resolutions because it was more optimized for the Pro, and the X just jacked up a resolution and made it stuttery. Meanwhile, probably could have ran the game a lot better. But the problem is, is that if you have a weak, if you, you're competing with yourself, and you're taking an Xbox Series developer, and they got to go, well, I'm going to make sure this works on my four teraflops. And, you know, well, what are you going to do with the extra, uh, what are you going to do with the extra teraflops? And you know what? Hit the resolution button. Make it go up to resolution. Ship it on that one. What about adding light and effects and better animations? Oh, oh no. We can't do all that because then the, the S is compromised. Oh, okay. But if you're a PlayStation 5 developer, you want it on a disc or digital? Well, we're doing both of them. Because guess what? The hardware is the same. There's no, there's, no, there's, no, there's no compromise in power that they have to worry about. Now, people say for Xbox, it doesn't matter. Because for Xbox, they got to worry about PC development. Now, that's not every developer. If you're looking at a developer that wants to develop for a console and not on PC... Usually, a smaller developer is going to develop for one platform. And when you have a developer on an Xbox, they got to make the distinction of how their game is going to run on two different power versions if they just want to make a next-gen game. Whereas a PlayStation developer doesn't have to do that. They only make one version, and they put in the, and that's it. Because there's only one PlayStation 5. But Xbox gave two power versions. There's a two teraflop machine with lower RAM, and then there's this one. So they got to work on different optimizations for either one. Now, if they're developing for all the things with PC, then yeah, they got to worry about scalability. But PlayStation doesn't have to worry about scalability. If they're not making a PlayStation 4 version, the PlayStation 5 doesn't have to be scalable to shit. They just say, hey, work on PlayStation 5. So you get more focused development. You get games that are optimized for the PlayStation 5 hardware. That's why when they showed a lot of the reveals, like Project Atheon and things like that, built for PlayStation 5, built for PlayStation 5, built for PlayStation 5, built for PlayStation 5. I bet you when you see X games, you're not going to be like, built for Xbox One X, One X, One X, Series X, Series X. See, the fucking names suck. Series X, Series X. Then be like, well, what about the Series S? Is it optimized for that one too? Oh, yeah, it scales. Microsoft added a a kink in the armor. So I do think that I understand the value proposition between the two of them. And I think getting that price is great. But I do think that game development. You might see more games, not just because it's a leader, but because the PlayStation is more convenient in the fact that there's only one type of hardware where Sony uh, Xbox has two variables. And that's only if you want to make a next generation exclusive game, which Phil says is a meme, which Phil says is anti-consumer, whatever the hell Phil says. And 
And then he wants you to play in the cloud, as Buck Rogers says. <laughs> but the other thing that they announced was this all access stuff. And this all access stuff, it's uh, you know, it's that financing thing where you have to pay for two years of Xbox Law, uh, Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, which is fifteen dollars a month, um, and you got to pay two years of that and for the console. So it's twenty five dollars for two years for the S, uh, Xbox Series S, and it's thirty five for two years for the Xbox uh, Series X, which is a difference of two hundred dollars after. Um, you know, of, of of ten dollars between those, and then ten dollars for yeah, it's a ten dollar price difference for those two for for that for two years, and it comes with two years of Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, um, and that's the financing plan. They're gonna really push this. Um, I think it saves you about one hundred and fifty dollars. I think there's a discount uh on it, um, so it saves you about one hundred and fifty dollars over two years. Um, it's a contract and it's a credit check. So my thing is is that if you really don't have the money to to order any of these, but you do have a credit card, like it's better to just finance the console for 18 months or, or a year and then buy the games that you want and subscribe to game pass for the months that you want. I think that is a better and take advantage of promotions or taking advantage of, uh, of, you know, of uh, of pop tarts and bubble gum and cereal boxes, dollar deals. Subscribe when there's a game that you want to play in there. Subscribe for a month or two and then take it away. Like I think the variability in what Game Pass is, the quality of what Game Pass is. Now, if you missed out on on generations of Xbox and you want to play all the old Gears of Wars and Halos and all that other stuff, then Get ahead. Subscribe for Game Pass for two years and go. But the uncertainty of their lineup, the delays in their games, the games coming in hot where they're, they're not fully realized and they need patches and they, and they need content delivery and all that other stuff. I'm not confident in signing up flat for two years of Game Pass. And as Buck Rogers says, Game Pass on PC is $5 a month. But I'm talking about a console owner versus... You know, do you really want to commit yourself to financing a console and Game Pass? I have no problem with financing the console. That's fine. But the fact that they had comes loaded with two years of Game Pass, I think that's uh, that's an excessive amount of money. Um, $15 a month for two years. That's like $360. That's almost, a, that, that's more money, right? Uh, right? My math is correct. It's like $360. So, like, it's almost more money than the S itself, just in services. You're paying about just about equal or more in Xbox Game Pass. That Now, the issue that I have is that you're paying two years for a service that you don't know when the content is coming. You don't know what content is coming. All you could do is buy the service based on what's in there. And if you pretty much played... Everything like if you had an Xbox One and you had an Xbox 360, you know, chances are that a lot of those games in Game Pass you have already played, and it's the new stuff. Do you really want to sign up $306 for two years? I would say save your money. This is the grinds as a consumer. Save your money. Use an X, use a Best Buy credit card or a GameStop credit card, just finance the console, and then cherry pick Game Pass. Because then, also, maybe you don't buy Game Pass for a month and you want to buy a game instead. You have that flexibility. But when you sign up for this Xbox All Access, you're committed to two years of Game Pass with your console. Now, I don't know what happens if something goes wrong with the console if you're financing it. Um, I'm assuming it's under warranty and all that other stuff. But I guess I don't think there's a two-year warranty on it, though. Um, I don't know if there's a special service plan, but if the console breaks it, usually technology has six month no six month uh, service plan on it, six months factory warranty. So I don't know if the next year and a half they are financing it. You know, I don't think they're covering it, but you have, you have to pay those monthly payments, just like if you finance it on your credit card. So I don't know if there's a service plan associated. But the thing is, is that 
you pay you their throw you have to get two years of Xbox Game Pass. And given the way that they're delaying games, given what they've shown at um at the Xbox games reveal, those games don't look like they're coming in the next year. Maybe next year you see Fable gameplay. Maybe you see some gameplay for Avowed in next next December. Well, that's a whole year of Game Pass that you paid for and you didn't even see any one of those first party games. Who knows when Halo Infinite's coming out? You're going to pay two years of... I say, come on, sign up for two years of Game Pass right now? For what? Halo Infinite's not coming anytime soon. Is there Gears expansions? Is there is there any big game coming? The last big game they released was Gears 5. Think about who subscribed for Gears 5 and been paying all this time. You've been playing what? You've been playing what? Crackdown 3? You've been playing State of Decay? You've been playing... Grounded, you've been playing Bleeding Edge, you've been playing Ori, you've been playing Minecraft Dungeons. I, I get if that's what it's worth. And if you want to go back and look at play, yeah, you're right, PlayStation Now. I saw that thing on PlayStation Now. I'm not going to talk about it yet because I don't know if that's real. But if that's real, that's going to be some huge ass crazy thing. PlayStation Now for $15 with PlayStation Plus and all the games and a, and basically, basically PlayStation 1, 2, and 3. Backwards compatibility through it. That's just a huge number of games. That's crazy service value. Value, value. You know, the value thing that everybody throws around. But, like, right now, I would never give $360 and commit to two years of signing up for Game Pass. I would not do that. There's too much variability and quality in it. And the games from Microsoft are not of the tier of Sony that's like, well, whenever Microsoft drops a game in it, it is like top quality and makes the system worth it. No, it's not. It's very in quality. And if you don't believe me, it's been going on for years. And hey, if you don't believe me. It means when I think about Xbox, I'm going to think about quality games. We have work to do there. We haven't done our best work over the last few years with our first party output. I'm, yeah, that's always, that that's always been a hit on the company on that whenever I hear some criticism. Yeah, not I don't know if I'd say always. Like, I think we. And you know. You hear what he said. The quality of our first party output has been bad in the last few years. Well, guess what? Know what? Two of those few years, you were paying for Game Pass since 2017. That interview was done last year. What did you say, Phil? When I think about Xbox, I'm going to think about quality games. We have work to do there. We haven't done our best work over the last few years. Last few years. 2019, last few years. Game Pass started in 2017. Actually, 2016, if you were on the beta. They didn't start putting their first-party games into it until 2017. So he comes out in 2019 saying, our first-party output has been poor in the last few years. Well, guess what? You were paying for Game Pass. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, Phil. I'm glad your shit sucked while I was paying for a service thinking I was going to get quality. That's why I wouldn't pay two years in advance for Game Pass. No way. There's too much there's, there's too much variability right now. So that's why I say for all access, grind recommendation. Use a Best Buy credit card. Use another credit card. Finance your console if that's the way you want to roll. And, and trickle in some Game Pass some games and you could jump on and jump off whenever you want that's the beauty of game pass fifteen dollars you could play all the games you want jump off jump back on them when they release the game there's no reason to stay signed up nonetheless games come in and out so you might love a game right now sign up for fifteen dollars let me play some resident evil 7 then guess what merry christmas Resident Evil 7 is gone. What? But I signed up two years of Game Pass. Well, now you got to buy Resident Evil. What? So there's content coming in and out of Game Pass. It's, the only content that's definitively in there is their first party, which is the most lackluster part of the whole situation. That's why their first party matters, because their first party is the only item in Game Pass that's there indefinitely. All the other third-party stuff comes and goes. 
It leaves. It's leaving Game Pass. What's coming into Game Pass? So this month, this month. There's three months it goes away. Yes, there's deals on them. After they leave Game Pass, you get 10% after 30 days. But still, that's extra money. That's extra money you're paying. If you really want the game, just go buy it. But the thing is, is that to sign up for two years flat of Game Pass, I think it's 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 a little much. There's a lot of, like, I think Game Pass is a good value, but I would not commit two years to it. And by doing that all access, you'll commit to two years of it. Yakuza, yeah, Yakuza 7 is in game. Is, wait, is Yakuza? Wait a second, let me see. Is it in is it in Game Pass? Or is it just an updated? Is Yakuza 7 in Game Pass? Um Like a Dragon. I'm looking now. I didn't think Yakuza is in Game Pass. I thought Yakuza is just getting an Xbox One, uh, uh, Xbox Series X update. Yeah. I don't think it's on Game Pass. Nah, Yakuza 7 is not on Game Pass. Not from here. Day 1 launch on Series X. The uh, Yakuami is in Game Pass. But Yakuza 7 is not. From what I'm looking at, unless they change that. It is? All right, I'm looking at it here. Yakuza like a dragon. Yakuza 0 and Yakuza Kwame available on Game Pass. Yakuza Kwame 2 launches on July 30th. Um, Like a Dragon. I can't see where it says Yakuza is launching in Game Pass. Yakuza 7. Yeah, it's not. Look, look, here it is, right here. It doesn't say it. It says Series X, Xbox One, Windows 10, Smart Delivery. It don't say that's coming into Game Pass. It just says it's going to get an update on the X day one. There it is. 59 in the Microsoft Store. 60 in the Microsoft Store. 89. It's available pre-order Xbox One and Series X pre-order today. I don't see it in Game Pass. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Buck. Uh-oh. That's it. Buck got it. Wait, hold on. Buck got it. <laughs> I don't know. It does not look like that is in Game Pass. Sorry, Buck. You got... Here it is. You got Phil Nest. No deal. <laughs> Buck Roger. Shout out to Buck Roger. Yo, that Phil, Phil Nest is very powerful. You never know, man. You hear the words Game Pass and all that other stuff, but, man, that Phil Ness consumes you sometimes. Like, it... It, it, it'll, it'll get you believing in some crazy ass shit. I'll tell you that. Um, that Phil Ness. But the, don't worry. That's why. That's why grinds my gears is here. I'm the anti Phil Ness. I'm the acetaminophen to that headache. I'm the ibuprofen to that backache. I am the Phil Ness blocker. The anti Phil Ness. <laughs> it's it's a, it's a powerful drug. That Phil Ness. You gotta be careful. You gotta be. <laughs> Gotta be careful. <laughs> oh, man. Hit that like button. Let's get to 50 likes, guys. Give a like for Buck Roger. He, 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 we, we, we had a, um, we, 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 uh, we, we explored the Phil Nest. We got him anti Phil Nest. We, we fixed him. <laughs> really? Well, I don't, maybe, I'm, am I wrong? I'm looking at everything Yakuza 7, and I do not see Yakuza 7 in Game Pass. The other Yakuza's are in Game Pass. And, uh, you know, because I heard somebody on some freaking Xbox podcast was like, 
All the Yakuza's are in Game Pass. And I'm like, come on, don't bullshit me. Dude, you got zero Kiwami, one of Kiwami, two. There, there's, there's six, there's five other fucking y- Yakuza's. They're not even on Xbox. So I don't want to say all the Yakuza's are on Game Pass. <laughs> Dude. Yeah, I can't find it. It's not. It's just that it's getting that X update. For it. But, anyway. I gotta tell you, it is, uh... Oh, what's this? I'm just trying to see if there's any news breaking while, while I'm live. So I don't have to do another recording. I gotta suck that, turn this off, and then see some bullshit. Ooh, shit. Some bullshit here. But... Because I gotta jump on that Avengers. But yeah, I don't see anything yet. Nah. Maybe tomorrow there'll be something new. But... The thing is, is like, the all access is neat, and I suggest it for financing and stuff like that. But the thing is, is that I wouldn't sign up for two years of Game Pass right now, especially given all like what Microsoft's shown. Maybe if they put some release dates on there, I'll feel a little more confident in signing up for Game Pass. But I say Game Pass is a great jump on and jump off. Like, get what you want to play, play what you want to play, and jump off. Um, and the thing is, is I had, I was all diehard Xbox. I bought everything. So a lot of those games in Game Pass, I have already played when they launched or you know, through demos or just like bought them. So I've played these games and really it's the new content that I look for in Game Pass. And unfortunately that's the stuff that's been lackluster, especially the new content from them. Um, because like Devil May Cry, I bought already, like things like that, like, you know, Fallout 4, I played that already. So like a lot of those games that are in there, Red Dead Redemption, I bought that at launch at midnight, I played it. Like, yeah, I'm not waiting for it to show up in Game Pass. Um, there's a certain games on PlayStation now that, you know, I, that they throw in there that I haven't played. That's fine. You know, and, and that's fine if I haven't been some games that I haven't played, but, um, you know, it is what it is. The thing is with Game Pass is really is the day and date and, it's their first party games. Like that's the main stuff that you sign up for, you know, because game pass is the, is the, is the, is the main pathway for Xbox. So they're living and dying on that game pass Hill. Sony's not PlayStation. Now is just an, an accessory and PlayStation now is, is, is half the price. I got it for $44. It was on sale two weeks ago. I, I tweeted it out again. It was on sale for $44 for a year. For I counted 460 games on PlayStation Now downloadable and 460 streaming. It was over 800 games. 900 games that you could play on PlayStation Now for 44 freaking dollars for one year. $44 is a $60 game on sale that you wait for sale. $44 gets you access to all those games for one year. That's crazy. $44. $44. I, I bought it, and you can find them on Amazon, too. And then on top of that, they had... And then its regular price is 60 for a year. The price of one game. $60. That's four months of Game Pass. Come on. That's that's no-brainer. But that's a, and that's an accessory. I I don't feel bad. Like, well, I paid for PlayStation now, and and and, and that's where I get my games. So like, for me to pay sixty dollars for this game right now, it's, oh man, I, I'm subscribing to fifteen dollars a month, and and then I gotta pay sixty dollars for this game, and I want to get the special edition that's eighty nine dollars, and oh my god, I'm buying all this stuff. Nah, dude, when it's forty four goddamn dollars for a year, that's less than four dollars. That's a that's a that's a freaking two ninety nine, three ninety nine a month. You don't feel bad buying a $60 game. You're not like, oh, shit, I'm subscribed to PlayStation now. I can't buy any games. You just you know, a drop in a bucket for a year. But when you're paying, uh, you know, $180 a year for games, for Game Pass, you know, when you got to crack down 60 bucks, that might be a hard pill to swallow. You make, oh, shit, you know, I'm paying $15 for all these games. There's nothing in here that appeals to me. I want to buy this new game that comes out, like the Avengers. Um, but I got Game Pass, and... That's why it's expensive. And what you're really paying for in Game Pass is really Microsoft's first-party content. You know, that's what you're paying for. You're paying for the Phil Ness games. You're paying for the first-party output. The Gears, the Halos. The, all those games add value to that system, to that, to that service. That's what you're paying for. Yeah. 
You know, that's the thing. And that's the stuff that's been lackluster. That's been lacking. <coughs> but when you're paying $180 a year, and then you still got to go, oh, well, I want to buy the Avengers. I want to buy uh, Cyberpunk. Uh, you know, I want Avengers and Cyberpunk and, and in the new Resident Evil 8 and 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 uh, and Call of Duty and, and, and Madden and, and NBA. And, uh, holy shit. Wait, I'm at seven games for, for, for $80 each. I am at $560 in games. Guess what? In addition to my $180, I'm paying a year for Game Pass. If I have fucking Game Pass, why do I want to buy seven other games? There's the conundrum. Because Game Pass don't have those games. Those are the games you want to play. Those are the games you need to play. Those are the games that are not in Game Pass. But hey, Phil got some games from page 7 of Steam that you could want to play. I just listed seven games off the top of my head that I want to buy. None of those games are in Game Pass. And Game Pass is not going to be appealing until it gets those games. Until it gets those type of games day and date. That's when Game Pass is true value. By Phil saying, eh, what is some passion project? Some dude on page 7 of Steam. I tapped him on the shoulder. I met him at the urinals and he wants to play. He wanted the game on Game Pass. Okay. It's coming out next week. Uh, you know, tweet it out. Uh, Xbox Game Pass Twitter. The guy at the urinal next to me said he wants to put out a game. Oh, okay. Love brand content to Game Pass subscribers. Halo's coming out of Game Pass. Sign up. Uh, oh, shit. What? Delayed indefinitely? That's the other problem. A delay costs you money. Not only does it cost Phil Spencer money, because now he has a delayed game, but guess what? When Microsoft delays a game, it costs you money. Who is your daddy? You know? Yeah, I know, Buck. A lot of shit goes down with Phil Spencer in the bathrooms. He was going to buy Sega, taking a dump last week. Now he met some dude in the urinal and he got content for Game Pass. Holy shit. Don't piss on my feet. Phil Spencer's a busy guy in those bathrooms. Put him in the bathroom. But what I'm saying is when Microsoft delays a game, it costs you money. What? Yeah. That's more months you have to pay in order to play that game. You're paying for that Halo delay. Guess what? I signed up. Oh, uh, Halo was... I, I, I signed up last year. I signed up for a year of Game Pass. Oh, baby. Last Christmas. They said Halo's coming out with the launch of the Xbox. Oh, yeah. I got to play Halo in November with my year and a half of Game Pass. Oh, sh What? Come on, don't bullshit me. No. Phil Spencer just cost you money. Guess what? Re-up your Game Pass subscription, bitch. Phil Spencer just delayed Halo Infinite on your ass. Oh, shit. Keep paying $15 a month and wait for Halo to come out. Oh, it's coming out in February. He did the same shit with Crackdown 3. Not that a lot of people signed up for Crackdown 3. But the thing is... When Microsoft delays a game now, it costs you more money. You got to re-up your game pass. You got to pay $15 extra to play those games when they come out. You were paying a year of game pass for fucking February. Oh, February, it comes cracked. Oh, delayed to fall. Oh, shit, February, fall, cracked that. Oh, delayed to spring. Oh, shit. Yeah, guess what? Hey, $15, $15, $15, You're paying for the delay. That's why I will not sign up for two years of goddamn Game Pass. I pay for that shit a la carte. Because when Phil Ness drops, I drop my subscription. Oh, shit, give my money back. 
You delay that game six months? Well, you're not going to see my Game Pass subscription until six months. That's why. You heard it here, Grinders. Hit that like button again. Here it comes. Hashtag Peekaboo Gaming. That's what Xbox Game Pass is. Peekaboo Gaming. You got something I want? Here's a dollar. Give me those Pop-Tarts. I'll eat some of those. I'll play a game. Give me that gum. Blow a couple of bubbles. I'll play a game. One dollar game pass? Eh, yeah, give me. What? What do you mean? I'd buy that for a dollar. Woo, that game was all right. Peekaboo Gaming. You jump on, you jump off. You jump on, you jump off. You got something I like? I jump on, I play. Trash-ass game? Phil Spencer, 68%. Eh, you know what? I'm not going to give you $15. I'm not going to pay $10 this month. Okay. There you go. But if somebody said, hey, two years, guess what? Two years, look, oh, we yeah, got a fable and a vowed and, 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 you know, and, and uh, maybe a perfect dark game and Halo and, you know, what are the release dates? I don't know. Maybe in the next year or two. So, wait, I'm going to pay $360. For two years of Game Pass, and maybe those games come? What happens? I'm in my final year of Game Pass, and now you delayed all those fucking games now to 2022. Or 2023 they come out. It's like, oh, uh, oh, shit, I just paid $360 for what? For a bunch of, of, of Phil Ness content from page 7 of Steam? From some bullshit indie games? Day and date? Some games in, in preview? Some old-ass third-party games? That didn't do too well at retail. Like that's what I paid for FADA for three years for two years. Games I would never had interest in buying in, but I just downloaded it because I'm bored out of my fucking mind. Like Jeff Keighley say, like Jeff Keighley said, Xbox Game Pass is not gonna be successful based off of I'm just gonna play a game this weekend, what I'm gonna play. No, it's gonna be the bangers. It's going to be the big games. The seven games that I announced. Resident Evil 8, Cyberpunk, Avengers. All these games. Those games need to be in the Game Pass Day 1. Assassin's Creed. Even goddamn shitty ass Madden. Shout out to No Competition. See what that shit does? Shout out to piece of shit Madden. But those are the kind of games. Call of Duties. Battlefields. Get those games in Game Pass Day 1. Now you're doing. Shout out the frog. Boggin Bin Gaming. Hashtag Boggin Bin Gaming. That's what you're paying for. And guess what? You have no say in what content. You know, what would be interesting is if they implemented some sort of voting. Or some sort of rating scale. Battletoads. That's right. Another gem of a game. But that would have been interesting if they would implement some sort of rating. So better content curates to the top of Game Pass. Like your thumbs ups and stars and things like that. Where it actually makes you find stuff easier in Game Pass. Secondly, it would have been better that it maybe if you they give you like 10 games and like the community votes on five of them for the month of June and then the month of July, the other five come out. But you kind of, you have some influence of what content's coming. Nah. Nah. You're at the mercy of Phil Ness and his crew. Another one. And another one. I don't want any more, Phil. You're going to get more indies. No! Page 7. Page 8. 10. Holy shit. Humble humble bundle. No, Phil, I don't want those games. Another one. And another one. And another one. When's the big games coming out? Uh, Excuse me. Phil, when's the big games coming out? Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time. Ain't nobody got time. Ain't nobody got time for that. Phil, come on. Oh, shit. Buck Rogers said Phil's getting... Wait till he gets to page 50. Holy shit. Then, then I go like this to Phil. I don't play this game. That's right, Phil. Sir, do we get to win this time? But anyway, as you can tell, don't sign up for two years of your life for Phil Spencer and Game Pass. Game Pass... Is a good deal, but take it in measures. Because right now, with Halo delayed, their first party input to 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 Game Pass, it's fucking shaky. <laughs> Thanks, Buck Roger. 
<laughs> I'm always on fire. It's grinding my gears. Look at my goddamn background. There's a fire. Flames all over the goddamn place. And whenever you get me talking about Phil Ness and, and Game Pass... Because I'm not, I, I, I see it. it, it it's, it's, it, it, right now it's on shaky ground right now. And he's gonna try to fill that shit to buy these Xbox Series X's and, and, and S's and sign up for Game Pass. And what I say is, sign up for what? For what? There's not even a goddamn Halo. We don't even know when Halo is coming out. What are you signing up for with these consoles? Signing up for Game Pass. For who? For what? Meanwhile, you buy your PlayStation. You're friggin' playing Spider-Man. You're going to play Ratchet and Clank. You might have a Gran Turismo in the window. You might have Horizon Zero Dawn 2 in the next four or five months. You don't need no goddamn pass. You don't need no hall pass for a PlayStation. You buy the PlayStation and great games are coming. You know it. You see them. You see them running on the PlayStation. That's right, Frog. Game Pass is great for the person who doesn't know what to buy. And that's what Keeley said. Like, he said that Game Pass is like cable television. Cable tel- Basic cable is great if you don't know what you want to watch. You know? Basic cable, yeah, like channel surfing. Game surfing. Like, but that is not the appeal that is not going to get the masses. That is not going to... Because you're going to get more people on Game Pass in order to get better content. See, Microsoft mentioned this about two years ago. And Phil, with his Phil Ness interview, hit that like button, everybody. Phil said that he wanted to do this... Um, this uh, water... Is it called a water wheel? This pinwheel? It's basically... They inject content into Game Pass to get itself mo- moving. So his first party input is a way to kind of kickstart, battery start. This this uh, it's called a, a water wheel or, or a, a weapon. I don't know what it's called. It's called some sort of some sort of uh, approach. What the hell is it called? It's called the um, the water wheel approach. Not the waterfall method. Pinwheel. I don't know. I don't know if you guys in the chat remember what it was called, but he called it the. Um... Let me see if I can find that quote where he said it. But the the, the theory behind it was that we. It makes itself like it's sort of like you kickstart it, like you jumpstart it with your content, and then basically the content just kind of flows in and out of it, and it just kind of becomes self-propelling. That you don't have to do that. Um, let me see. What do you call it? I want to see if I can find that actual quote. A leaky faucet. <laughs> um. Let me see. I said fill content. I don't know. But basically, that's the gist of it. Like, they were going to keep injecting content, throwing thing at it. Um, I think it's called the water wheel. It's called the, the water wheel. It was some, it's some sort of business thing where it, um, a flywheel. Thank you, Jemaya. That's where it is, the flywheel. I think, I think I mentioned this before, and Jemaya always reminds me. He says it was a flywheel. It's a flywheel method. Yeah, here it is. Yeah, so it's a, a business. Thank you, Jemiah. Thank you. Um, it's the momentum you gain when you deliver. Uh, let's see. Flywheel is a simple amount of energy. Yeah, it's the flywheel method in business. 
That's what he referred to as Game Pass. He said it about a couple years ago. Let me see. Flywheel Phil Spencer. Let's see. Because he always says this. Phil and S. Yeah, here we go. Here it is. Found it. Thank you, Jemaya. Oh, buddy got it? Oh, hey, thank you, buddy. Thank you, buddy. Here it is. So, um, yeah. He hints at a cross game strategy. So you can see this was uh yeah, December twenty eighteen. We've been talking goddamn game pass since, since, since for two years. Um so here it says this. Um This is it right here. So we built Xbox Game Pass. It started on console. It will come to PC, which is here now. Eventually, it will come to every device. That's xCloud. Um, and who knows? Maybe on the Switch and PlayStation when it seems feasible for them. Uh, we use the flywheel that we have with customers on an Xbox to start the growth in Game Pass. But as somebody sitting back and taking a long-term view is where our business is going, you should look at a business model where we think it scales to billions of people, not hundreds. So he says here that, where was that? I remember reading this a long time ago. Yeah, people kept thinking this is when he was. Um... So, like, it just starts, what he does is starts injecting. But he, I thought he also referred to it as the as the, the flywheel with also the content that we're doing. Um, Jesus, look at this. When we think about reaching customer with this content, a uh, compute device, be an Android phone, you think, what are all the ways a person pays for content already? So we need to make sure that we're world-class at free-to-play content, but we also look at subscription as a much lower barrier way for a customer to build a library of content. <laughs> they wheel the game plays and fly out. The water mill, yeah. No, he was talking about this whole, uh, this flywheel thing, and I think if, uh, he mentioned one before, like, where, like, we inject kind of content into. But that's where he mentioned it. Yeah, oh, Jesus. See, this is the thing. Look at this. They've been talking about next-gen hardware since 2018. That's why when you see how they rolled out the Series X, you they were talking about this thing for two goddamn years. Yeah. If you watch Studio Acquisitions, what we've done, we focus on creative teams that we think can build very interesting content to help the flywheel Game Pass grow for our platform growth. We're probably less interested in management teams and infrastructure and things we already have inside the organization. You can look at our track record. We added seven studios in six months. Uh, but more importantly, so um, just to skip around, knowing that we can plug them into Microsoft infrastructure, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, our focus has been, hasn't been on going out and adding duplicated functions that we normally pay for, but I, I, but more how we find the creative independent teams, blah, 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 blah. But this is, wh is this where he says it. The Amazon, yeah, Amazon's a competitor, and uh, there's Project X Cloud talking about this. He's doing that since 2018. Thank you, Jemiah. See, man, I, I, I remember I brought it up before because it's it, this is the thing. Here it is. This is it. Yes. This was the quote I was looking for. The first-party studios are very important as the creative flywheel for Microsoft services. Our first-party content capability as we're building business models like Game Pass, adapting new services where really creatives are the flywheel. We're going to invest ahead of the curve in markets that we see in getting creative subscription is a perfect example. See? Subscriptions, subscriptions, subscriptions. Dude's been talking about it since 20 friggin' 18. Two years. That's what I'm saying. I'm done. Show the goddamn games. And when we get to the games, it's humana, humana, humana. But talking about subscription models. See? We're obviously seeing subscription models and forms of media you can use as an example. But investing in our own content to attract players to your subscription services and the flywheel that gets created as you see millions of people coming into the subscription and you invest to continue to get fresh new content is probably the most important thing of growing that service. So see, using their first party in drawing in the subscribers to then create the flywheel so that they could grow the service. Their first-party content is the lifeblood of Game Pass. 
That's why when people go, there are games. First party games don't even hold the importance that they used to hold. They hold even greater importance to Microsoft right now. First party games are the lifeblood and the success of Game Pass. That's why when people are like, oh, I got a backlog. It's okay that Microsoft doesn't have new games. It's okay that Halo's delayed. I got a huge backlog of games. Hold on. Shut up! Yeah. Stop it. The fact that Halo's not coming out this holiday is not only devastating to the launch of the new consoles, but it is devastating to Game Pass. So the celebration of Game Pass, it is devastating to Game Pass because people, think about how many people signed up for Gears 5 and Game Pass. How many people would have signed up for Game Pass for Halo? Yeah, that's not happening. And maybe they would have bought a year subscription with their new console. That was the whole point of it. It was like, get your console, Game Pass, and, and Halo's in Game Pass. And people would have been like, oh, I'll sign up for a year of Game Pass. And Halo. I'll get my Halo through Game Pass. So now I get stayed and I keep subscribing to it. That's what Phil wants. Phil doesn't want you just to buy the console and buy Halo. He wanted you to buy the console and subscribe to Game Pass to play Halo. So that Halo is that carrot that keeps you subscribing. What's up, Captain Crunch? Ah, Buddy Cactus says, Don Magic is alive and well on Microsoft. He just fooled people to think he's called Phil Spencer. Oh, shit. Donnie D's still there. Well, basically, buddy, you want to know why? Because he finally, basically Phil's saying the same thing. Stay where you are. I got a console for you. Oh, shit. But anyway... Game Pass is the lifeblood of goddamn... Uh, their first-party content is the lifeblood. Hey, thank you, Mark. Oh, my God, 5 a.m. there. Holy shit. Good morning. But, yeah, like... Game Pass is the lifeblood. Uh, I mean, their first-party content is the lifeblood of Game Pass. And without that content, Game Pass is not going to succeed. And like Keely was saying, it's not the... What am I going to play this weekend? It's like, where are the must-play games that go in Game Pass? Captain Crunch says, Hardware and OS updates is all about all they can get done right now. Who knows, man? Those consoles are going to be coming in hot. And yet again, we had two missteps of software reveals that made Microsoft look like next-gen sucked. And guess what? Announceable hardware. You can't make this shit up. I was hoping that they had some games. Maybe tomorrow they're going to show some more games. Maybe the initiative got some stuff to show. Maybe Microsoft has some more things to show. Maybe that's what some people are alluding to online. You know? Maybe there's going to be uh, some games that they're going to show that, that maybe. I, I don't know. Oh, my God. What's this? Oh, Jesus. Tokyo Game Show lineup. This remember they're gonna have a fifty minute thing in Tokyo Game Show. It's a place where everybody can have flight your message. Japanese creators, latest news on the flight simulator for PC, a Japanese Minecraft community update, and information on recently announced games. Ain't nobody getting time for that. Ain't nobody getting time. Ain't nobody getting time. Ain't nobody getting time for that. Ain't nobody getting time for that. With that. With that. Yeah, that don't sound exciting. But with that, hey. Two ninety nine, good price point. Game Pass, do not sign up for two years. It's a financial console that way. Um the S and the X competing with each other. Good luck, Microsoft. Good luck with the sales pitch to show the differences between those two consoles. You did a shitty ass job between the X and the X of uh, the X and the S of the Xbox One. Good luck with the Series X, and now you got another console competing with you with the PlayStation Five. Sony, you want to make this a sealed deal? You price that console properly at four fifty and three ninety nine. Do not go over four hundred and ninety nine dollars because that will definitely shake some boots. 
um, it would not make me not buy the console because I go where the games are. And there's a lot of compelling games that I want to play on PlayStation over Xbox right now, especially since Xbox doesn't have anything coming out this holiday. Um, and it's just horrible. Like, yeah, I've never seen a launch worse than this. But um, we'll see. Maybe they got surprises. Maybe they got uh, maybe Steam uh, page 8 of Winter Sales. Uh, maybe get a last-minute content. Um, but, yeah, I know Mark Woodland. I know. I, I, I heard some of that stuff. Xbox fanboys tell him that Game Pass is a system seller for the S. Uh, I'm like, you get Exactly. You could get Game Pass as of this weekend. You could get it on your phone. You don't even need an S or an X. You know? I'm trying to use the phone. Thanks, Pug Channel. But yeah, you don't even need the. You don't even need an S or an X. You could play Game Pass right now. You know. And the thing is, I see people going, "Oh, three hundred dollars and uh, and a hundred and 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 eighty dollars for Game Pass. What what a great deal! Who would spend four hundred fifty dollars for all these games? Four hundred eighty dollars for a bunch of random ass games and old Halo games and old Gears games. Okay. And then when you're a kid, you spent the four hundred eighty dollars for a year of Game Pass, three hundred dollar console. And then your kid comes running to you and going, Dad, I want to play Call of Duty. Dad, I want to play Cyberpunk. Dad, I want the new Resident Evil. Shit, Dad, I want Spider-Man. Oh, fuck. Now we're in trouble. Yeah. Now who's the fool? I spent $480 and there's a whole shit ton of games there that you don't want to play. Now I got a year of that bullshit. But I got to buy games on top of that. Damn. Dad, I got to subscribe to Xbox Live to play Fortnite. What? And Rocket League. What? All right, well, let's buy you a year at Xbox Live. Oh, shit. Oh, you can't do that anymore. Go look on Amazon for old dilapidated cards. Maybe you could get $60 a year on Game Pass for Xbox Live. What's this $10 a month, $15 a month I got to pay? Oh, yeah, $15. Oh, that gives you Game Pass. I don't want Game Pass. I just want Xbox Live. Well, you're going to have to buy that on a month per basis or a three-month basis. Or go find some dilapidated cards on Amazon, and maybe you can scratch off one for 60 bucks for a year. Oh, shit. They get back. Yeah, I know, Mark. I talked about it earlier. That $300 with those $219 memory cards. <laughs> you're going to buy another console for that. Shit. But yeah, so you got to think about what you're getting. Just because you said, hey, kids, here's a $300 console. Here's $180 uh, a year subscription for Game Pass Ultimate. Dad, I want to play the new Marvel Lego game. I want to play the new Star Wars Lego game. It's not in that Game Pass? No, it's not. Dad, I want to play Cyberpunk. I want to play Madden. I want to play Call of Duty. I want to play NHL. I want to play NBA 2K. I want to play the new Resident Evil. I want to play the Avengers. Oh, I want Spider-Man in the Avengers. Oh, shit, you bought the wrong console. Like, the games that people want to play are not in Game Pass. So just because you said I bought you 200 games doesn't mean those are games that people want to play. All right? Taken from somebody who I subscribe to services... And still have to buy games because the games that I want are not in those services. Fortunately, the service that I subscribe to for games are $44 for a year. I'm not breaking the bank. But if I'm paying $180 for a year and I got to go buy four and five games, oh shit, maybe I don't want to pay $180 a year because I don't want to play those games in Game Pass. That's the problem. That's why Game Pass needs to have compelling content because... People go, it's a value. It's a value if you want to play those games in there. But if you're going to spend $30, you're paying $60 on Cyberpunks and all these other games that you want to play, Assassin's Creed, Cyberpunk, all those games that are releasing this holiday, and you're paying for Game Pass. You know, last point, and I make this a lot. The thing is, is a lot of these people that have Game Pass right now finesse the system. They used three years of Xbox Live, two years of Xbox Live for $120 and then upgraded to Game Pass Ultimate for a dollar. 
So a lot of these people are inheriting, have Xbox Game Pass by default for $120 for two years because they finessed the system. Now, they can't separate it out, but they bought two years of Xbox Live and upgraded to Game Pass. Let's see when the rubber hits the road and all. The, and you only could do that for two years. Two years ends next year. Let's see how advocates of Game Pass are still around at the end of next year when everybody's really coughing up $14.99 a month because they already used their dollar bill gaming. They already ate enough Pop-Tarts for a fat bastard. Now they got to pay and the rubber hits the road. Now let's see what the value of Game Pass is. And let's see Phil Ness come out and go, well, Avowed and all those games fabled, they're not coming for another couple of years. Let's see that come out next year. And let's see people saying, well, I'm going to pay $15 for Game Pass for another two years. While I wait for Phil Ness to get to get ready, we'll see. That's why he needs big content now. He needs big content coming. You can't just have people spend $15 every month and not give them worthy content. I'm not talking about page 7 of Steam deals and indie games. That's some bullshit. Then call it Indie Game Pass and make it $10 a month and have 15 But the rubber's going to hit the road soon enough. All right? And when it does, then I want to see what Game Pass's value is. Maybe Microsoft turns over a leaf and starts adding big games. Let's see. Maybe there's big announcements tomorrow. Maybe, maybe I come on here and go, holy shit, that was a huge announcement. Cyberpunk Day 1 and Game Pass. Now... I'll change. I'll say okay, it's worth it. But until we start seeing big games in Game Pass, right now it's not. All right. Maybe they, maybe they made, maybe Assassin's Creed's day one in Game Pass. Maybe all Ubisoft games are day one in Game Pass. Okay. Now, now maybe Game Pass is worthwhile. Okay, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe it is. But again, we haven't seen it. I agree, Mark. PlayStation Now is a better service with, with more games and games that accessorize the main games that you buy. But Game Pass, for it being the one-stop show of all your content for Xbox, it's not up to par yet. They need better content. And it lives and dies by their first-party content, which has been lacking. And don't take that from me. You hear it here. It means when I think about Xbox, I'm going to think about quality games. We have work to do there. We haven't done our best work over the last few years with our first. Phil says that first party content is not good over the last few years. All right. No fanboy talk. There he is. Mr. Phil himself said it himself. He acknowledges that their content has not been good. Now, recently, games on PC and Game Pass have been doing pretty good. Everybody wants to be a flight simulator. Everybody wants to be a pilot. So can't wait for that. When's that announcing me? Well, whatever. But anyway, with that, Grinders. Enough from me. We're going to have the games do our talking. And that's what I want to see. Goddamn games. I'm done with this tech talk. So with that, good job, Mark. That's right. Wait, good morning, Mark. And good night to Grinders. I'm going to go play some Avengers. But with that, Grinders, I want to thank you for over 65 people watching live for an impromptu show. What a day. Hit that like button. Oh, shit. Buck Rogers says it's not 10 p.m. Oh, my God. Guy, keep me up all night. Thank you again. Thank you for tuning in. Hit that like button. Share it out. Hit that subscribe button. Let's build the Grindhouse. Let's get up there. Uh, and, man, we are going to have some fun coming up because hopefully... We got some more big announcements. I have to save my voice for an exciting time and get those pre-order buttons ready. Trigger fingers ready, baby. Let's get the games coming. That's what I want to talk about. Finally, no more hardware. The S is out of the way. The X is out of there. The PlayStation 5 has been announced. Let's go, games. Let's go. I thought this was going to happen a couple months ago. It better happen now. We're two months away. So with that, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Again, this has been What Grinds My Gears, and I am Ghost.